actually. Let's do this. All right, so. <clears throat> um, welcome, everybody. We are going to start today's stream. I wanted to talk about uh, my whole experience at GPLA. Um, the event was, it really was a blast. I played in the main event. And I also played on Friday. I played at an MCQ uh, that also took place um, on uh, the main event. This is the list that I played. Um, this is the 75 that I that I presented. Unfortunately for the MCQ that happened the day before, I was missing a couple of cards. I didn't have cross on grip, and I didn't have the fourth basic forest. So basically, what was going on was uh, I played the list from the previous week, right? So no, not the one that I tested last week. Why do I hit wigs? Uh, what's, what's... I didn't understand the question. <laughs> uh, but well, so I was playing basically the Hercules Recall in place of the Cross on Grip, and I was playing the Canopy instead of the Fourth Forest. I could have gone to like the basic land uh, station over there at the GP and have a mismatching forest, but... You know, uh, that's that's not the kind of person I am, unfortunately. So I basically waited until my brother bought, brought me the first copy of the correct basics, you know? Um, so I, I, I would much rather play with with three basics and a Horizon Canopy than, than to play with mis 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 mismatching basics. Because that's just awful. That's, that's not what real people do. Um, hello, Sejas, how you doing? Um, so, so yeah, so basically both of those were, were, were the events of the weekend. Uh, TCG player 92, thank you for the follow. Um, uh, yes, uh, I think this list is excellent. Uh, I think this list is very, very sweet. I, I, I really loved it. Uh, it, it felt super smooth and... Okay, so let's start. Let, let's start with the MCQ. Uh, the MCQ, uh, the MCQ uh, was on Friday. It was six rounds, and basically, what I was expecting for the whole weekend, basically, not uh, the record is actually on the screen at the top right. It, it was ten and five. Um, basically, I was expecting uh, Phoenix and Death Shadow to be far and away the most played decks in the tournament, in both tournaments actually. Uh, and then I expected the Wear deck not, uh, not to be the best, uh, not to be played a lot, but I was expecting to see it a lot at the top tables. Um, so I think the first part I got it spot on because Phoenix was everywhere. <laughs> Phoenix was literally everywhere all weekend. I played against it six times total over the weekend. Uh, I went three and three. No, actually, no, that's that's a lie. Actually, I beat Blue Red Phoenix once. That I went two and four against it. Um, and then uh, Grixis Shadow was also everywhere, but I only got paired against it once. Um, and then we will go over all my matchups uh, soon enough. Uh, so yeah, so basically we have the the MCQ, which was which what with what I consider a suboptimal list, and I did actually miss the cross and grip a lot. Um, I Hercules Regal came came in zero times basically, <laughs> um, and then um, and cross and grip would have would have come in you know quite quite a couple of times. Uh, so that was very unfortunate. Um, but uh, but still, so the MCQ started, uh, I have some notes here, so sorry, I'm going to be looking at my phone, but I am actually looking at my notes, so don't don't feel upset, please. Um, yeah, so we started the, the day on Friday, and I get paired against Burn, uh, which I was, of course, pretty happy about. Um, I basically, we play game one, and I put, I stabilize with a Titan my opponent has, they have already used one Boros Charm. And they need to top deck exactly Boros Charm before I kill them on the following turn. Of course, they flip the top card and it's a Boros Charm. And then games two and three, it's it's pretty uneventful. I just I just do Titan things. Then I play against the Mono Red Phoenix. Uh, that matchup is miserable. <laughs> it really is miserable to play. Uh, I I I lose 
quickly zero to uh, and I, I talked to my opponent afterwards and he's like yeah I feel like this matchup is very bad for you I'm like yeah I agree 100% um, but uh, but still my opponent was nice and everything uh, then I get paired against Blue Red Phoenix. Uh, that matchup, I think it's considerably better. We have way more outs to their like thing in the ice, not draws, and and that kind of stuff. So um, it's it's basically I I win game one uh, after making a very very interesting play that I wanted to talk about. So the board state is my opponent has a thing in the ice. I'm at sixteen, I think. Or, or 15 or something like that. And my opponent has a Crackling Drake on 5 in play. So basically what happens is... I... I have an Explosives on 2. I have Explosives on 2 in play. My opponent has a thing in the ice with I think only 3 counters on it. And they have a Crackling Drake that's a 6-4. Six, six, uh, six, um, and then I... Pass the turn to my opponent, basically. Setting up a Titan for the following turn. Then my opponent... Uh, th the reason why I do this, and I, I could have developed my board. Like, I, I could have cracked explosives and played out an Asusa and, and stuff like that. And what I realize is that the only way that I lose that game is if my opponent somehow goes off after killing the, the, the thing in the ice. If, and, and if they go off with the, crack, with the Crackling Drake and they make it a 16 power creature with the help of a couple of Lightning Bolts or a, like a 10, a 10 power creature and, and, and a couple of Bolts, then I die. So what I do, which I thought was really cool, is I didn't play anything and I just pass a turn. Setting up the explosives for the following turn. Um, basically what this does is it forces my opponent to... If they want to go off, then the thing in the ice is going to flip, which means that the Crackling Drake will come back to hand. So basically, I guarantee that I'm not going to die because, uh, you know, if my opponent does what they need to do in order to kill me, that means that they cannot kill me, which I thought was hilarious. And I won the game exactly because of that. So then uh, what my opponent does is he just like plays a couple of cantrips, he puts the, the, the thing in the ice on two, and I take 9 or something. And I'm still at 7. I don't die. End of turn, I crack the explosives. My opponent uh, flips the thing in the ice to like... I think I had a Titan in place, so they, I, the Titan gets bounced. But then uh, my opponent's board is empty. And I simply slam the Titan. I haste it and kill them from there. Um, so that was a very interesting play that I thought... That I wanted to, you know, to, to share here. Because it's one of those things that... Uh, if I hadn't thought about it and I hadn't seen that line as the only possible way that I die, uh, then I would have basically misplayed and gave my opponent, uh, you know, what the obvious play, which is, you know, like crack the crack the explosive so you cannot bounce my titan. But the actual play that win me the game was um, was uh, was the no unorthodox one, I guess. Uh, so that was pretty sweet. Uh, my record was uh, 10 and 5. Let, let me catch up with chat a little bit. Um, uh, for your GPA. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sehas. Uh, it is prime time indeed. Uh, learning Amulet Player, wondering why the white lists over the other builds. Also, what can I learn? What hands are good to keep and which ones I should throw back? Uh, TCG Player 92. I literally, if you go to my YouTube channel, you, uh, you can search for uh, my name. So, F. Pavlos MTG. Uh, mulliganing and I made a full like 40 minute talk where we went over hands what do you want to keep uh, stuff like that so you can use that as a reference I'm um, also just starting to learn the deck trying to figure out if I have enough time to learn the deck for GP Calgary in a few weeks really just comes down to whether uh, to play Tata Ship at 90% or Amulet at like 65-70 honestly I think that Amulet is better than, than Titan Shift uh, but Titan Shift is still a very very good option so probably if you have only a couple of weeks I usually recommend go with what you know best, and if you know Titan Shift at ninety percent, that's that's a pretty you know pretty good percentage. So, um, so I would probably recommend you you just go with 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 that one uh, with, with Titan Shift. Elron Scrubber, <laughs> thank you for the follow. Um, yeah, so that was that was the the notable play there. Alfred is love. Thank you for the follow too. Um, that was the most notable play that I thought very cool and worth talking about. 
Um, and then on game two, my opponent keeps a one lander faithless looting hand, and they just never see a second land, so I just basically host them. Then I played against Dredge, which was such a tilting matchup. My opponent moves to five on the play, and then go turn one, nothing. Uh, then, uh, like, play a land and, and pass the turn, and then they untap, and they cathartic reunion on discarding Sting with Imp, Loam, and they, by the end of the turn, they have dredged two Crippin' Chills, uh, two Narcomibas, one Bloodcast, and three Amalgams. And I sh I lost shortly after that, <laughs> because, because his draw was completely absurd, and I'm like, that's... That's like the best multi five I've ever seen. You got it, dude. Um, and then we played another match, another another the second game, and he he just ran me over. Uh, he really drew insanely well. Um, at this point, I'm two two at the MCQ, not looking super high, but I really wanted to like you know get some practice for the pre for the next day, so I kept playing anyway. And I got paired against Mono Red Phoenix, uh, which. Uh, at this time, I managed to steal a game, but it just doesn't matter. Like the the matchup is just horrendous. He just bloodmans me. Um, this one, I it, it's the second bloodman. <laughs> Over the weekend, the constant was the second bloodman is the one that gets me. Uh, he he you know does does his thing, and I like destroy the first bloodman coalition relic, doing some serious work, uh, some some very heavy lifting. Um, and allows me to transmute for a sage, which I play, I blow up their moon, and then uh, the second moon is again the one that gets me. If I had uh, if I had been uh, running cross and grip, I would have brought it in, so I would have had another answer. Unfortunately, I was not, and my opponent just basically slowly pokes at me until I eventually die. Um, so it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the greatest feeling ever, but you know, it is what it is. And then uh, I'm at two three at this point. I I face my opponent. He wants to split, and I'm like, sure, I'll take it. But I still wanted to play the to play the match for practice. And uh, yeah, thank thanks everyone for the messages in chat. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, and we we just played against Red Green Shift, and it's a game one. I just never see a Titan, and my opponent just kills me. Uh, game two, I I just killed him very easily it just like it was just a very uneventful match it basically uh i i i get destroyed because i never see a titan game one i uh, game two i just do my thing and of course there's nothing he can do about it and then game three i i draw spell pierce and my opponent goes turn one search for tomorrow Felt bad. <laughs> if I had drawn the negate, I had a very, a very real shot at winning that game because my opponent ended and ended up winning with scape shift. I packed his, I packed his titan, uh, but then on the following turn he just uh, scape shifted me, and I'm just looking at these stupid spell peers that at no point along the curve I it, it could have encountered anything. If it had been one of the two negates, I would have won that game, but it was it was a spell peer, so it didn't do anything. Which was pretty bad. So basically, I went two and four at the MCQ. Um, not not my not my, my best record ever. Uh, but it was it was fun though. It was fun. It really it really made me realize that I I really wanted to be playing a cross and grip over Her Hercules Recall for the following day. Um, it's a card that has has some uses, as opposed to you know Hercules Recall, which would have come in. So far, zero times. Um, okay, so that's the end of the day. We move on to the main event. Uh, I show up on time, of course. My opponent does not. So <laughs> I didn't get any vice at the MCQ, but at least uh, my opponent was kind enough to not show up. And I get a, <laughs> I get a by proxy. So that was a solid start uh, for the for the for the main event, um, especially because I had found free parking next to the convention center. That was also pretty sick. That I I was winning even before starting the event. Uh, then uh, second round against Blue White Control. Uh, game one. Uh, my opponent seemed to not be very familiar with the matchup. Uh, he he was playing very well. 
Uh, well, 10-5 was no cash finish, but that's kind of like the meme of today, today's stream is that I got one single pro point. So that, you know, objectively makes me makes me a professional uh, amulet player, right? So... <laughs> um, so that's that's the that's the idea. Um, I know, I know, Sean is a hero. I was I was as blown away as you are right now. Um, I I really consider that a win. Uh, how high is Celestial Purge? Celestial Pur uh, Purge is a very fine card. Um, it's it's basically like uh, an alternative to uh, Crossbone Grip. It's basically better in the Phoenix matchup for obvious reasons. You can you can exile. Um, you can exile a moon if you, if that's what you need to do, or you can exile a phoenix, both of which are very relevant. Uh, however, it's much, much worse against the Weird Prison deck, because of course it does literally nothing. Um, but uh, I guess you can exile a Tesseret post war, so that's that's the only thing it does. Uh, so I, I decided to go with Crossing Grip instead, because I was, I was trying to hedge a little bit. Um, but Celestial Purge is very much a, a, reasonable, a reasonable card that you can play, especially with the uptick in Rix's Shadow lately. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, Shadow is, is, is definitely fine, and it doesn't hit most humans, it just hits Mantis Rider and uh, Freebooter. So I, I honestly don't think I would bring it in against humans. It doesn't seem like it does enough. It hits eight cards, and then you know you just die to meddling mages and Thalia lieutenant beats. I'd much rather have you know like whatever card we're taking out is probably better than Celestial Purge. Um, will you be considering any other nearby GPs like Vegas? Uh, yes, if it's modern, I think I might go to Vegas. If if it's modern only, or or if it's legacy, I'll probably try it as well. But I I won't go to a standard or limited GP. I just I don't like those really. Um, no, I think uh, Mo Mo Joy School. I think that it's not a matter that people don't like to play it. I think it's a matter that people don't know how to play it, and the chances of going to time or getting draws is very very real. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Austin, it's it's uh, red or black. Uh, yeah, I think the work the word deck is one of the best decks in modern. I've been saying that for like a month or two months now, and uh, I think that uh, just it's insane. <laughs> it's it's insane against uh, the Phoenix deck. Like as in you have you probably have like a ninety percent win win rate against Phoenix. Unless they are running Shatterstorm in the sideboard, uh, if they are not running Shatterstorm, you are winning that matchup. It's it's as easy as it is. It's just like that, uh, and it's it's extremely hard to play, and uh, and it's also like really solid against Shadow if they don't have the discard on one, because if you manage to Chalice on one, then Shadow probably cannot win. Uh, but but the draw the draw factor is very very real, especially in the early rounds of a GP when uh, you know players are not uh, you you might see players that are not particularly good, so they don't know they are locked out uh, or they are like trying to time you out or something like that, and it's just like no, it doesn't work out. Um, yeah, Dom, however, was playing he wasn't playing straight up, he wasn't playing straight up uh, where uh, where person he was playing uh, more like Thopter's word. So the word prison lists uh, look something like this. Um, so we have ancient steerings and we have uh, Aether Grid, Tesser, Tesser and Agent of Bolas as, as your alternate win cons. Uh, and game one, you only win by uh, uh, using Crucible to recur Ibn Rivule and you deck your opponent. Uh, or like if they deal with this, you can add Academy Ruins back, whatever artifact you want, so you don't deck yourself and your opponent does. So this is what I'm talking when I say the word Prison deck. It's what Arilax play. I think he was 12-3. 12, 12 one round he was played right uh, right, uh, right next to me. He was playing right next to me when we were both 5-1. on one. So it was, uh, it, it was cool to see him play in the deck. Um, but yeah... Yep, so I'm happy that I got my Mox Opal where they were 20 ticks. <laughs> that was that was a cool. However, though, I don't know if you guys are aware, but Tolari West is 15 bucks, both in paper and in moto. 
Uh, and that deck runs four, and I only own three, so I should have gotten them when they were at seven. <laughs> but now I'm gonna have to probably bite, bite the bullet. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so yeah. So that's pretty much. Uh, that that's pretty much like uh, what I was thinking about that. Uh, going back to the actual tournament report. So uh, we are in round two. Uh, I get paired against blue white control. Uh, I get paired for uh, against blue white control. My opponent is is very nice. He's actually local of San Diego, so I don't know if it's. I, 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 I feel like I have play, played him before, but I don't exactly remember. Anyway, um, he he's a nice guy. We're just playing. Uh, uh, the matchup, of course, is, is very good for me. I, I It felt like I knew the matchup way better than he knew the matchup. Seemed like he he was uh, he was making a couple of, of mistakes, like, you know, classic Hippathis, Maya Sousa, that kind of stuff. And I run him over game game one. Game two, it plays out in a very, very sweet way. So basically, we are playing Drogo. We play Drogo, we play Drogo, we play Drogo. Uh, it, we make it all the way to turn like 15 or something uh, around there. He has a shit ton of lands. I have even more lands at him. CTP zero. Thank you for the follow. Um, so we are like going to get into a point where... Uh, where I am just like basically waiting for him to make a move and I'm just like slamming uh, like irrelevant cards in order to for him not to get ahead and um, so he cannot uh, cantrip and stuff because he he like had like a illumination hieroglyphic illumination and that kind of stuff Um so I basically kind of like we're both spinning our wheels just making land drops doing nothing then on one turn I play an uncounterable Thraktusk because uh, I, I I have second I have two caverns in hand so I play one out I oh he he filled off ruins me a couple of times you know ir irrelevant stuff but whatever so I play the Thraktusk and uh, the Tusk comes uh, comes down I have like one amulet in play I think uh, the Tusk comes down I pass the turn and that's when it happens my opponent goes and he plays a detention sphere. He plays the Tension Sphere, gets my Tusk, sure, whatever. Um, I get my 3-3 three, three Beast, uh, but my opponent has at this point only 8 mana available to, to him. So I go to my turn, and I lead on Rexage, so I play Rexage. Uh, counterable, of course, because I want to bait him into, into using their counter spells. Uh, I play my Rexage, um, he cryptics it, I, it resolves, I Summoner's Pact, he negates. I summoner's fact. He dispels. I summoner's fact, and he is like, uh, okay. At this point, I, I still have the the cavern in hand, but I don't need it. So I simply like hard cast the titan. Again, I have amulet in play. So I get. I already have stronghold, and I get Vesuva copying stronghold to play around him top deck in a field of ruin, and I'm. This play is pretty sweet. So I'm trying to set up for next turn, right? So I get the um, I get the stronghold and uh, and and Boros Garrison. So I haze the Titan. I have explosives in hand. I swing with everything with the Beast Token and the Titan. Uh, I don't get the double strike land. I get a, a bounce land and like something else or whatever. Uh, so my opponent takes the damage, he only has one mana uh, up. I could have played around path, but I already had another... I think I had another Titan in hand, or I had another Pact in hand, I, I don't remember. No, I was getting Tolera West, so I could, I could get the, the next Pact, so I, I was not concerned. Um, so, basically, we attack, and on my second main, I play an Explosives on three. Uh, without thinking too much about it, you know? Just like casually playing it, uh, dropping it down. Then my opponent goes to their turn, they play a Teferi, at this point I'm extremely ahead on board and my opponent is at 2, so I don't really care about the Teferi. Um, I go to my turn, I announce going to combat, and my opponent Cryptic taps, I say it resolves, still at the beginning of combat I crack the explosives, the detention sphere uh, gets destroyed, I get my Thraktas back, I haste it uh, with, with the stronghold and I attack, for, I attack him for, for lethal. 
and he he tells me that he never saw the detention sphere line which made sense because he didn't play around it at all uh but but yeah that's that's how i get game two um so i'm at this point i'm two and oh feeling pretty good uh going into round three i get paired against grixie shadow um <laughs> yeah loyal love sir you 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 can get there if, if you dream if you dream enough um basically we get paired against Chrissy shadow turn one uh, game one i get i get shadowed <laughs> uh turn two chameleon colossus ladies and gentlemen if you are not playing chameleon colossus against that shadow i strongly recommend it uh my opponent uh, basically uh, he he went after my Titans instead of my Pacts, but there was one turn where, where I don't know if he miscounted the amount of mana that I had or something, but basically he gave me X, he allowed me to have 4 mana, so I packed it for Colossus, and my opponent goes and reads the card, and he's like, oh, alright. He was at 8 at this point. <laughs> and he has one Angler in play, I think. On their turn, they were, they were holding up stub or something, which just doesn't matter. I just Colossus them and I kill them, which is hilarious. Then game two, my opponent thoughts is me on turn one. They take my steerings and I basically draw amulet, amulet. Then I basically top deck an amulet and I play it. No, I don't play it. I play the top Colony Garden. By the way, Colony Garden in, in game two, Colony Garden gained me like 15 life or something, which is ridiculous. Uh, just jumping Gourma Gangler turn after turn, which was great. Um, I basically have... Uh, I play Colony Garden on one. My opponent on turns two tap, taps out for Angler because they always have an Angler on turn two. It's like seven mana. It's it's not a big deal for them. They, they are the real... They are the real ramp deck, really. Um... So basically he taps out for Angler and I play second amulet. Go. <laughs> so my opponent at this at this point he has three mana open. I think they mulligan to six this this match. Um he He has uh he's representing stuff very very strongly and I basically I have the choice to like try to go longer and play around Disdainful Stroke, but the angler that my opponent has on the other side is beating me down real fast. So what I do is I draw for turn, I play a Bounce Land, I play an Azusa baiting my opponent into like using a removal spell or her or whatever. Uh, I, so I make my second land drop, indeed my opponent goes ahead and he kills my Azusa. And then I basically slam a Titan. It's like, you know, you need to have this Nafal Stroke right now. And they didn't have it, and I get there. So it was very, it was very interesting. So at this point, I'm 3-0. Uh, I get paired against uh, the Bug Reclamation deck. Um, this is with Wilderness Reclamation. I don't know if people, if people know it. Um, wilderness Reclamation. So I place this card and it basically plays 100% an instant speed. This is the only non-instant, or I guess it, they have Snapcaster Mage, but it, it has Flash. And then they play Mystical Teachings. Um, because they make like insane amounts of mana and then they uh, they play in Mystical Teachings and they like Teachings for Teachings and they they get a ton of value this, this way and whatever. So I get put against this deck. Uh, game one, I simply did not get uh, i did not get up to speed enough he had the reclamation on, on on turn four and it basically spiraled out of control from there i just couldn't catch up game two i make a misplay um i think that the match i think the the, the matchup is, is is it's fine in fact uh, i my opponent has the reclamation on on turn four and they are down to three cards in hand i play an uncounterable sage Destroying the reclamation, and I like I'm I'm on the aggressive. I am just like beating him down with like trinket mages and whatnot. Um, and I on the following turn he has another reclamation immediately after he plays it out. I play an uncounterable titan. I swing. I have him at three, I think, or something like that. And then 
Then uh, on the following turn, he teachings for Cryptic. And I have Spell Pierce and Pact of Negation. He knows I have the Pact because I, I transmuted for it. My opponent, uh, Hype uh, 13 East. Thank you for the follow. Uh, my opponent uh, goes for the Cryptic Tap and Draw. I Pact it. My opponent dispels my Pact. I uh, Spell Pierce their, uh, their Dispel. And my opponent has another Dispel for the Pact. Um, so I ended up losing the Counter War. And here I made a terrible mistake. Um, with the Titan trigger, I could have bounced. Uh, I could have bounced my Cavern of Souls or my Bojuke Bog. I used the Bojuke Bog earlier in order to stop my opponent for flipping an Ascanta. So I already have the Bojuke Bog in play, and I can uh, with the Titan I get a bounce, a bounce land, and I can either or. My opponent is, at this point is playing very slowly. He's been playing very slowly throughout the whole match. Like the first game took like. 25 minutes or something um, and he's like tanking over every single every single play um, so I made a mistake of overcompensating for that and instead of like urging him to play faster I am the one playing faster and this is something I learned here I, I don't play many uh, paper events and you know just playing a moto doesn't give you this this training which is unfortunate so I, I really paid for my inexperience here in that sense. Instead of, you know, telling him, yo, dude, you need to play faster. I, uh, I am just playing faster in order to compensate and make sure that we have, a, we have a way to finish game three if it comes down to that. So I don't think about it. And I bounce the Cavern of Souls because I'm like, yeah, I can replay it later, naming, whatever. But what I fail to realize is my opponent is not beating my board. So this uh, this cavern of souls is not gonna do anything, right? I I'm not gonna be casting anything new because my opponent can beat my board, and I fail to realize that he has a mystical teachings in the side in in the graveyard. Um, so if I had bounced the Bojuka bog and replay it, exiling that mystical teachings, I win the game. But I fail to see that, and my then it's that mystical teachings the one that that ends ends up uh, losing me, winning them the game. Um, it, it was a very unfortunate match. I made that punt. Uh, my opponent also had everything, which, you know, they, they sometimes do. But I also made that tiny mistake. I could have still gotten there, but I made that tiny mistake, and it ended, ended up costing me the match. Um, so I did 3-1. and one. I'm a little bit bummed, because I, you know, I realized my, my misplay, and it, it just, you know, it hurts. <laughs> it, it, just, it just hurts to see... Uh, to you know, to know that you lost a match because uh, because of a misplay. Uh, okay, so I get I I am playing this match right here, and I see to my right. Um. Yeah, but they they hadn't they had only drawn three cards, uh, because they had only uh, they have only two doors for the cryptic. That's the only thing they had tutor for, um, and they had only draw three cards with the blues and zenith, because uh, that oh no they, they also tutor for the blues and zenith. So they drew three with the blues and zenith, and they had the cryptic. So I knew about the cryptic, which I had covered with the pact of negation, and I they basically in those three cards that they drew, they needed to have found two two dispels, um, and they did. And even still, I I was I was doing pretty you know, pretty well, but I, I made a misplay and ended up costing me the match. Yeah, I I mean but, but that's that's the that's the moment when, when my inexperience playing paper runs really showed, you know, when I just I could have done that and I and I didn't because I I don't know. <laughs> I just overcompensated and ended up ended up making mistakes because of it. Uh but okay, so while I was playing I see that the person to my right is playing Cheerios. And they're getting paired against Burn, and they lose. So when I see the, the pairings board, and then I go to my table, and I see the guy playing Cheerios sit in front of me, I'm like, shit. All right, three and two it is. Uh, game one. Uh, game one, he does what Cheerios does. He just beats me on turn two or three. Yeah, on, on turn three. Um, game two, I... Basically, uh, I basically have the kill on three, and he doesn't have the kill on two, 
So I I ended up killing him. It was it was very tight though, cause he had a, a pure still paladin start. So I cannot really kill him because his guy is like an, a two eight or something. So I cannot actually kill him. So I have to find a way to also put explosives on zero while getting the titan and it's beautiful how all the math ends up working out perfectly for me it was great uh my opponent was like oh wow that i was very i, I like i played every every single move that i made net me the exact amount of mana that i needed to like get titan double uh, hasted uh, twice or no he was at 14 so hasted only once and use that remaining mana in order to transmute, get explosives on zero to low up his board, and then um, and then crack it. Uh, because because I needed the mana in order to double strike. I needed the the red white the border garrison lane in order to give it double strike. So it, it was just beautiful. Um, so uh, that's that's game two. So I get there and I'm I'm actually very happy that I stole one honestly. And game three, it's. It plays out very, very uh, interestingly. So my opponent is, I in in the early turns I play an explosives on zero, and I have my opening hand has a negate, and they have and I have explosives and I have like some lands and I have a trinket mage. So I, I also have an amulet. So I turn one I play my amulet. Turn two he does uh, like a mini go off, but that doesn't go anywhere. So I get another turn. I play explosives on zero, and I have the mana to crack it, and I pass. My opponent wear, wear tears my amulet, which I can negate. I choose not to do it. I, I let the amulet die. Uh, then my opponent goes to goes to their turn. They do a, uh, they like play a SRAM, but don't have they don't have any zeros, so they pass the turn again. Uh, at this point, I suspect that my opponent has at least one retract in hand, but the explosives is preventing them to uh, to crack it. So I untap. I made some awkward land drops just because I want to set up to have negate plus EE crack on the following turn. Um, my opponent does a very weird play there, uh, which ends up costing them the game, uh, and that's great for me. So on the turn that I have four mana untapped, my opponent Noxious Revivals their Wear Tear that I had used early, they put it on top, and then on their main phase, they wear my explosives. I... Um, I... Uh, I uh, crack the explosives in response, my opponent retracts, I negate the retract. That basically makes it so my opponent uh, loses the counter war, all of his zeros die, and he's left with a couple of 2-2s. I... I drop, I trinket mage for a second explosives, I put explosives on two, crack it, destroy their dudes. So I, I, I had already used one path now that I remember. I had already path one of their dudes already. Um, then uh, we, my opponent uh, draws another one of their guys, he draws so many of his guys. Um, he plays his guy and he draws like one card or something. No, no, that's, that's when he makes a mistake. Yeah, he plays a second guy, he plays two dudes. He has a uh, SRAM and, and Paladin in play. I, I At this point, I I, um, I resolve a Titan and I cross my fingers because there's nothing I can do. I So I just tap out for it, play it, see what happens. My opponent draws and passes the turn. And at that point, I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of shaking because I'm, I'm very sure that unless my opponent is playing... Uh, something like ceremonious rejection or something i'm gonna win that game i go ahead i transmute for the third explosives play it on two crack it and my opponent extends the hand and i'm like holy crap i just i just beat one of my absolute worst matchups which is insane uh how Nilo, thank you very much for that that subscription uh welcome to the prime time stronghold bring those prime times hell yeah um Bring those prime times to the chat. Um, what's the listen? Uh, I I will talk about I will talk about that uh, afterwards, Aaron, because I'm gonna also talk about like where I think the list is going and the things I like, etc. Um, okay, so that's that's the idea. Then I played I play against Jund. I 
basically I go ahead and I don't draw ever any Titans or Tulare Wests or uh, or whatever on game one. I have double amulet, I have multiple Azusas, I champ block and I like trade as much as I can. But I, I die on like turn 8 or something. He, he didn't even have an aggressive draw, but I just never saw a Titan, which was unfortunate. And and I die game 1, then games 2 and 3. Chameleon Colossus. <laughs> oh boy. Um, again, I I do the same thing. I, I only have 5 lands in play, but I make sure that I cannot die to Fulminator because I have 3 basics. Um, so my opponent cannot like fulminate me to not pay for Pact, and I go and I get uh, Chameleon Colossus, and my opponent reads it, and it's just like, yikes! And uh, and yeah, it was it was it was just Colossus all the way. Uh, then I then I finally drew a Titan after the Colossus, but the Colossus gained me like two turns where my opponent was just like staring at my board because they can't do anything about it. It's, it's hilarious. Uh, and then game three, it was just like a. I, I drew a couple of amulets, my opponent moved to 5, I think, or something, and they just never got going, and I just... Oh no, th this was not the multi-5 uh, game, it was just like, I just beat them. Uh, I don't think there were any crazy crazy plays or anything. Uh, I re No, I remember Thraktas also did some serious work here. Yes, so basically whatever your cavern is naming will make Colossus uncounterable, or it will fix your mana for Colossus, and or actually. Uh, sweet, so I'm rallying back now. I'm actually a uh, five on one. I'm pretty happy and Then I get paired against dredge uh, I keep I move to four game one my opponent has a dredge drop, but we die uh, game two it It's uh, it's just uh, an amulet draw. I I don't draw any I don't do anything nasty but uh, Tormod's Crypt plus Bujuku Bog is just too much for my opponent to handle, and I'm on the play, so uh, they didn't go. They had basically had to go off on turn two, or or they I would just simply take over with Asusa and stuff. Um, so I I simply no they they had until turn three. I had the turn four Titan on the play, uh, which I keep, and it's just my opponent doesn't go off by turn three, and I I just kill them. And game three was very interesting. It was extremely, extremely tight. And my opponent makes one crucial mistake that cost them the game. They are at 25. They are at 25 and I'm at 7 or something. And they, uh, they do the dredge thing. And I'm just like struggling to stay alive. I have one amulet in play. And I'm... I'm just trying to get there. Asusa is, is giving me some land drops and I'm trying to set up for the following turn to try to see if there's anything I can do uh, in order to survive. Asusa is champing price amalgams and stuff like that. And my opponent has a has a an engine grudge in the sideboard. They flashback looting, tapping three lands, and they, they dredge a little bit, uh, nothing relevant, and then they play Copperline Gorge. And they say, flashback, Angel and Grudge. And I'm like, uh, that comes into play tapped because you have three lands already. And he's like, oh. And I know that they have a gemstone mine in hand because they they they, they got it back with Loam earlier in the game. And I'm like, holy crap, I have a shot. Uh, I untap. I, I slam prime time. I haste it. I try to gain as much life as I can. I go up to... Uh, seven, I think, uh, after after taking some beating, and I, I have to Bojuke Bok him, so I Bojuke Bok him. And at this point, I'm just like, if my opponent has, uh, if my opponent has any, any, like, uh, the four mana thing, the Creeping Chill, if my opponent has a Creeping Chill in hand, I die. If my opponent has another Blood Gas they can hard cast, I die. If they have, um, Conflagrate, I die, although that's very unlikely because uh, I have already exiled one of them, so they need to like literally top deck the conflag. And uh, my opponent swings with everything. I block in the, in the best possible way, of course. I go down to two, and my opponent passes the turn, and I'm like... <sighs> I untap, I, I swing with... Uh, give my Titan uh, Passivus on haste, I swing, and they went from 25 to uh, 17. And then I swing for uh, 16. And 
No, I, I, I play an Azusa and haste it. And and then I give I give my other Titan plus Super Soul and I swing for lethal. And my opponent my opponent extends and he's like, Yep, I, I really messed up there. Um so that was just me getting away with it and just like my opponent um my opponent making a slight misplay there, just like playing the wrong land. And that that ends up costing them the match, uh, which was of course great for me. Uh, next round we play against John again, and game one I, my opponent, uh, they start Jundin me, but I end up out Jundin them because I make it to six mana and I play a Titan and <laughs> John can't really beat that. And game two, unfortunately, they mull to five, and I. Again, again, Colossus makes a makes a very nice appearance here, but I could have I could have won with anything at that point. My opponent simply just does not have enough gas going on, and I uh, and I just I just kill them uh, to the point that I, that I'm just playing around damnation because I can afford to. I I have like a Titan in hand that I could I could swing for lethal with, but you know that plays into Assassin's Trophy, so I'm like, there's really no need for me to do anything here. I can just simply my opponent cannot beat my board. So I can play around uh, Damnation by holding the, the card and, and Assassin's Trophy. I, I mean, it would have to be like Assassin's Trophy into Damnation, but I can play around that. Uh, I can play around this card because I can, like, I have a Tolaria West in hand that I'm just not transmuting. Uh, and I have, like, a Thraktas, a Colossus, and a Titan in play. And my opponent is just, like, chomping the Colossus every turn. Um, so it's just, it's just, I basically bully him to death. Uh, which after a multi five, it's it's rough, and then we go to the last round of the day where I get paired against Scales, and my opponent was very very good. Um, game one, I he goes like uh, you know turn one steering, turn two overseer, and everything kind of like snowballs out of control from there. I don't I find my explosives, but by the time the explosives can come down on two to stop the overseer. Uh, then by that time the ballista they have already drawn a ravager and the ballista was like a nine nine so the ballista ends up killing me unfortunately and then game two my opponent goes turn one overseer <laughs> on the draw and I'm just like is this gonna happen again damn it and then uh, they I managed to resolve a titan and everything but my opponent makes like again they they were very good at scales uh, they he starts like doing some math and stuff and he like sacks some things and he does some other stuff and then they manage to kill my titan and then I'm trying to set up for the following turn because I have to, to top deck because I have to pay for my pact and then they top deck a hardened scales and they just they just kill me from there uh, it was it was rough so I finished them day one at seven and two uh, which I'm I, I was I'm very happy, but you know to finish the day with a loss after you were seven and one, it really it stinks, you know. Uh, it's not it's not awesome, uh, but uh, but still, you know, it was my first ever modern GP. Being able to like day two on the first try felt very good. I felt like I was playing uh, I was playing very very well even to the end, uh, except for that Bojuke uh play that got me. And that was uh, that. That one also still was. Ugh, damn! If I had if I had realized that Bujuka Bog play, I might be you know eight and one right now instead of instead of seven and two. So that one also was a little bit annoying. Anyway, I didn't sleep very well, but it was it was what it, it was what it was. Um, and then I I I go over there for the for the for day two, uh, early in the morning. I find free parking again. I'm just. I, I'm just like beyond, beyond amused at this point. Uh, I find for parking again, and then we, I go for the, in the first round, get paired against Phoenix. Um, I actually I was talking to to my opponent. He was very nice. He was telling me he was uh, he was LSV's uh, roommate while they were in college. Uh, so it was it was very cool. Like he he was you know very, a very very nice opponent. And here I I destroy him game one with double amulet. Game two I have um they have the turn three blood moon and I, I have the answer in hand. I have a Rex Sage. 
I simply never see a basic forest uh, or... Uh... No, no, that's a lie, that's a lie. Uh, this is the game where I, I have two basic forests and I have Coalition Relic, but I never find a Pact or Sage and I never see the Crossing Grip either. So I simply... I packed for Tusk in order to try to stay alive and get me a couple of, of turns, but it just, it doesn't matter. Just, he just like, because that's the problem with Phoenix, okay? That's the issue with Phoenix. It not only uh, Blood Moons you, but their clock is extremely fast. Uh, my I was at 20 and my opponent killed me on two turns. That's just not okay. <laughs> that's the problem with the deck and that's why I think that the deck is a little bit of a problem. And I would not be surprised if we see a banning in the next, maybe not the next banana restriction announcement, but probably like in six months or like a year or so. Uh, but I honestly think that the deck is it's a little bit too much. It's just just a little bit too much. Um, so um, then we go to game three, and this is where my opponent plays. They play very well, and and I I bite it. I I. They get me so well. So, um, I have turn one tap land. Uh, I think it, the turn one capital cross. So, I, I remember this perfectly. So, turn one, um, my hand is uh, Titan, Pact, Rex Sage, Cavita Crossroads, Amulet, Explosives, uh, Semi Growth Chamber. I I snap keep it because it, the hand is, is pretty good. And I go turn one crossroads tapped. Uh, my opponent is very smart. Um, I will talk about that in a second, Damarin, and why that is strictly wrong. Uh, so, I go ahead and I... My opponent goes and he says, fetch. And I'm like, cool, this is in their main phase. They fetch a basic island, they present, and they say go. And I'm like, damn it. He's got the spell pierce. Okay, I draw. I draw um, Tolera West. Play tapped. Pass the turn. My opponent draws for turn. They play Canal. They Faithless Looting. They draw two, they discard whatever. Pass. And I'm just sitting there like he's got the spell pierce. I cannot be the spell pierce. Um, this sucks. <laughs> uh, so I basically play. I draw Sun Home. Wow, I I really remember this 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 uh, game. I top deck Sun Home, and I'm looking at my hand, and I'm going through so many options. Option number one is play around Spell Pierce. Option number two is ignore the Spell Pierce, act like he doesn't have it play around Blood Moon. What's the issue here? If he has the Spell Pierce, I 100% lose the game on the spot. Because they can Spell Pierce my amulet, and then my hand is just extremely slow and it doesn't do anything. If I try to not to play around the Spell Pierce, and if he has Blood Moon on 3, then I, can, I have the Rex Sage in hand, so I do have the answer. I just need to find either a Basic Forest, or a coalition relic in the top like three or four cards of my deck because that's the, the margin that I give myself because I know that they're they're gonna kill me shortly after. So that is um, that is my situation. Um, if I want to play around, if I want to play around Blood Moon and not Spell Pierce, the the play is easy, right? Uh, tap my my Toleria West, play Amulet, uh, play Bounce Land, tap three, play Blood Moon on three. My opponent cannot upgrade this turn, um, so even if uh, even if they have the upgrade, I am I am fine because they, if they want to upgrade my explosives on three, they would need to use their following turn to upgrade it. Um, and then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna play around the spell pierce. They have been representing it the whole game, um, so I simply play the sun home, play amulet, uh, pay two. Uh, white and blue uh, because again i have the sage in hand so i don't need to try to play around i mean i i i cannot play around blood moon anymore here right so i play i pay a uh, blue and white play explosives on two playing around thing in the ice uh pass the turn my opponent slams the blood moon 
and I just lose from there like two turns after. He 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 literally kills me in two turns, which is insane. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was. I I made a mistake of not asking my opponent whether they did actually have the spell pierce, but if they did not, I'm like. I I was just outplayed. Uh, there, there's nothing nothing that I can say there. My opponent just they just played it beautifully. They they planted the seed of them having spell pierce, and I beat it. I beat it so hard it was crazy. Silas Beller and thank you for the follow. And that is just uh, that is just you know that, that is that the, the, the Blood Moon of course wins the game from there on. Even though I had the answer in hand, it's it's very annoying. I have uh, my record is on the screen. It was ten and five. Uh, playing surgical on their own servitions to give it a plus four. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a play. That's a play, loyal lobster. Uh, it's actually plus five because the surgical also counts towards the Drake's power. Oh no, but but it's but one servitions already counted. Yeah, you're 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 correct. Never mind. Um, okay, so I get paired against. Um, uh, so at this point, I am seven and three. Dead for top 8, so no more top 8 illusions, but I still have the illusion of hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, running, running hot and getting some money. I get paired against spirits. I get paired against spirits. Uh, game 1 deck just does not function, unfortunately. This was, this was one of the few times that the deck just failed me over the weekend, and I just, I just... My opponent just aggroed me out, and I, I just couldn't get anything going, and I simply died. Game 2, we are in this incredibly, incredibly close game. Uh, my opponent has a Spell Queller with a Summoner's Pact under it. They have a Deputy of Detention with a Amulet under it, and they have a Noble Hierarch. That is my opponent's... Uh, board state. My board state is Trinket Mage, Azusa, and uh, and nothing else. My hand is Hornet Queen, Explosives, no, no Explosives, um, Hornet Queen, uh, Rex Sage, and I think maybe a land or something. Um, yes, yeah, Silas Berlin, we are going to be, uh, we're going to be playing, uh, finishing up a league that I'm playing and maybe play another league, depending on how long, how much longer the, the debrief goes. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll be playing Modern soon. Um, so basically, I am looking at the board state and I'm thinking uh, the only way that I have to win is if my opponent uh, whiffs for a couple of turns and the only way that if that happens, that they win, is if their last card in hand is Unified Will. So what I do is I play a Reclamation Sage for no value, with seven lands on, on seven lands in play. Then I pass the turn, my opponent swings for a couple, I'm, a, I'm at like two or something, I'm super low. And on the following turn, I tap seven, drop the Hornet Queen, and I cross my fingers. My opponent says, it resolves. Uh, I get my tokens, and then um, my opponent draws. At this point, I'm dead to Phantasmal Image. I'm dead to Deputy of Detention. Uh, my opponent has a lot of outs, but they, they start drawing like the 1-1 the one, one dude. So at this point, I'm dead to a lot of cards, so I need to pressure them somehow. I, I have a Cavern in hand that I have had for like... Uh, no, no, I didn't have a Cavern yet. No, ne never mind, never mind. Um, so I am... I am swinging slowly with the tokens. I am get, uh, chipping in for four, chipping in for four, trying to force a couple of uh, of trades here and there, and then I top the stronghold. So now I can actually uh, give my tokens uh, my tokens vigilance. Uh, he like wastes a path and stuff like that in onto my tokens. Very careful not to trade with the queen, which I thought was very smart for my opponent, obviously. Um, Although at this point, Deputy's attention also gives them the game, so it's I guess it's arguable, but it, it's it's still probably correct to not trade with the queen. And then uh, the the queen just get there, gets there. Uh, they ended up trading the they ended up trading the um, the um, spell queller, 
I get my pack, I pack for Titan, make it uncounterable. He, he doesn't counter, at this point, Unified Willis is live again for him, but he doesn't counter the Summoner's Pact, and then I play Cavern, and I play an uncounterable Titan, and he... Um, he... Uh, he simply, you know, dies to that Titan at that point. And that kind of Titan gains like six life, and it's 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 sweet. It's all all good. It's all good with with the world. And then at the end of the game, my opponent shows me the unified will, and I ask him, "You had it right at, when I play the sage?" And he's like, "Yeah, I did." Um, so I, I was really proud of that uh, of that little play right over there, playing sage for no value whatsoever. And simply, simply to like make sure that my opponent cannot, if they don't top deck a creature. So I'm just like playing to my outs, which are not a lot, but somehow uh, that's exactly what happens. And I get there because I made that play, which felt, uh, which felt very good. Then game three, um, he kind of like steamrolls me. I'm, I have like a one outer basically. He puts me in a situation where I need his last hand, his last card in hand to not be unified will because I haven't found my cavern and I hadn't have time to transmute for it. And I need for his last card not to be unified will. And I, I packed and he has unified will because he learned <laughs> he learned his lessons <laughs> from the previous game. And he packs the he unified wills the, the pact and I, I die on the next turn. Uh, it was very close. My opponent played very well and it was it was just a good a good game. Um, so at this point I'm just seven and four, mostly playing for fun. Maybe if I if I eleven and four I can get some money. We'll see, you know. Um, so I go on to the next match against Affinity, uh, the one with uh, Affinity with uh, f uh, Frenzy, Frenzy Affinity. So my opponent moves to five game one. And I have a reasonable hand, so I do my thing. My opponent is smart. Uh, they are not conceding, and I'm just like, this is pretty crazy. Like, what could they have? They have double God Blast for my for my Titan, which I play which I play around because uh, before combat uh, I fetched for Tolaria, plus I had enough mana to like uh, stronghold somehow. So I I'm covered against that, but it still it still gives them more time. Uh, then they slam a frenzy on four and they go land. Or on five, maybe. No, no, on four because they had Springleaf Drum. Land, Welding Jar, Ornithopter, Mox Opal. Um, I think they played a single pest and then they pass. And I'm like, okay, that was impressive. So I untap, I pay for my pact and transmute, set up lethal for next turn. My, I pass to my opponent. They draw for turn. They go Master of Ethereum, play land, play Mox Opal. Play uh, something, uh, I think it was another Splitting From. Play Ornithopter. Play another Signal Pest. Uh, I think they drew, I made the math, it was they drew 11 cards off of the of that Frenzy. And I'm like, I'm not going to lose this, but I'm, I'm scared at how close this was. Uh, which was. Which was insane. Like, they literally drew 11 cards, which I thought was ridiculous. Completely insane. Um, anyway, I killed them on the following turn, that's, that's fine. Um, then we play game two, and my opponent blood moons me on turn three. Coalition Relic gives... I have double packed in hand. Coalition Relic gives me enough mana, so I don't even need to pack for Sage. Because um, uh, the Relic itself just gives me all the mana, so I, I just packed for Titan. I slam a Titan, make more land drops, and then on the following turn, uh, I I pack for Sage and I, I kill them from there. Um... I am Steve, thank you, Steve E, or Steve, uh, thank you for that Twitch Prime subscription, welcome to the Primetime Stronghold, bring on that Primetime hype, share the love in, in chat, and actually let's update the subs, we got two subs today, thanks everybody for the support, um, so yeah, on the following turn I, I destroy the moon, uh, and I I swing for for uh, I swing for a lot of damage. Yeah, it, it, I I faced so many blood moons. Um, then he um, so after after I show the blood moon, I I swing for a ton of damage, and he like plays a single blood moon. I just at this point I just don't care. They are at, like very small amount life total. I I again relic plus mountain 
plus basic forest equals explosives on three, so I just play an explosives on three, blow up the moon, swing with Titan win. Uh, but I was very impressed at, at that um, that stupid frenzy uh, list. Uh, like, it really... I, I got a little bit scared there. When he drew 11 cards, I'm like, yeesh, that's just pretty impressive. So, this is uh, the third to last round against uh, against Phoenix yet again uh, my opponent uh, swings for uh, 10 or on turn three and then 10 with double bolt on on turn four uh, to kill to kill my my Titan so the so the thing in the ice is lethal so pff, you know it is just Phoenix doing Phoenix things um, and then game two uh, he at, at this point honestly uh, one thing that I f uh, I forgot to mention I have drawn zero path to exiles in against Phoenix matchups I have drawn zero path to exiles all weekend no path to exiles to be seen ever um, my opponent. Slams the moon on three. I have the sage. I swing uh, with with my stuff, setting up Titan for next turn. He has the second moon, and I only have a single basic forest. And I top deck the path to exile the turn after I'm able to cast it. And I'm just very very sad that again I'm losing to fucking Blood Moon out of Phoenix. Um, and I could have beaten the first one, the second one got me, so the same story that happened in the MCQ, uh, able to beat the first moon, the second one is just one too many. Uh, it really is, it, at this point it really starts to get annoying. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's pretty much the story of that match, it was not particularly good. Um, uh, then we, at this point I am 8 and 5. So I can still rally back and get my pro point, and I've made it so far, so I'm like, might as well, right? I get paired against, you guessed it, Phoenix. At this point, I am just done. <laughs> I, just, I hate this deck or anything. And the worst part, you know what the worst part is? My opponent was also tilted, because it's game one, he's on the play, he goes turn one swift swift spear off a basic mountain go. At this point, because of the basic, I put I put them on Phoenix over putting them on on burn. And I I have explosives, I have amulet in hand as well, and I have I think I don't have a bouncer. That's the only thing that I'm missing. Um so I could go for amulet and try to set up something up, or what I choose to do is tap basic forest, explosives on one, go. My opponent looks at me, then draws her card, swing for one, no effects, all right, take one, play a land, pass a turn. I'm like, is this, what, what, what's, what's going on over there? I draw a card, play my land, it was a cavern. So on tap land, on tap source, go. My opponent draws a card, plays a, plays a mountain, swings with Swiss Spear. All right, no blocks, no effects, take one, okay, cool. I'm on, eight, I'm on 17, pass the turn. Like, sure, <laughs> I'm not gonna crack this. I play another land, just natural land drop, go. My opponent plays the fourth land. Swing for one, no blocks. <laughs> okay, take one, like, sure, sounds good. Uh, I'm at 16 at this point, and it's like turn four. I'm like, this is great. Um, and then... Um, they pass the turn again, I draw, I think I make, I think here is when I make, yeah, so at this point I have a bounce land in hand, and I have amulet, Asusa, and, and some other stuff, so this is the turn where I, I take one again, so go down to 15, and then end of turn I actually crack the explosives, then I untap, I go amulet, Asusa, do my thing, and I, I kill my opponent on that turn. And he he was so tilted. He's like, yeah, you draw your one of explosives. I'm like, mm, you draw, and like, I, I didn't want to share some information, but I'm like, shut your mouth, dude. It's a two off. So, shut up, okay? 
Don't worry about it. And then game two, he phoenixes me. And game three, I go turn one amulet, Tormod script. They, they, they go turn one land, go. And I go turn one amulet, play Tormod script. And my opponent again looks at me like, shh. And I'm like, he's got a phoenix hand. <laughs> and I'm just like looking at that Tormo script like, yep, 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 yep. Uh, and he, he plays an Eidolon on two. I play a land and I... Oh, I, I, I feed off of that salt. I feed and I love it. It's great. Um, I, I play a second amulet. No, I don't play a second amulet. I play a Susa this time. I play a Susa because I I, I want to play around Shattering Spree, which which he showed me on the on game two. He shows me Shattering Spree, so I don't want to throw out the second amulet. Um, so I play a Susa, play a couple of them, I play a couple of lands, and then my opponent uh, draws a card. Soon with the Adelon, I'm at like uh, 16 at this point, and then I draw a card for turn. It's another amulet, and I'm like. Play amulet. Uh, um. I think he kills the first Azusa. Uh, pack for another Azusa. Do my thing. Uh, swing for sixteen. You die. Uh, swing for twenty. You die. And my opponent says that that crypt. I again so tilted. That crypt. I had. I had a double phoenix. So I'm like sideboarding, bro. <laughs> sideboarding. Um, it, it really felt good to finally be the stupid. The mono red phoenix deck. Uh, it had been hosting me all weekend, and then I'm nine and five. So, I mean, spoiler alerts. I win the last one, but how I win the last one is pretty sweet. So let's 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 go through that. So I get paired against my opponent. My opponent goes turn one, uh, turn one uh, Eldrassi Temple, and I'm like, yep, I. Then they go turn to Ursulan, and I'm like, sweet. Um, they go turn three Smasher, and that's that starts clocking me. But uh, they had two, they drew two Rose Quarters in order to keep me exactly off of Titan Mana uh, on the turn before I I get to stabilize. So they they get game one, game two. I sideboard do my thing, and I. My opponent seemed to not be particularly experienced in the matchup, it felt like, because he was like aggressively going after my bounce lands with ghost quarters, and I'm like sure I got I got more of those. <laughs> but I'll take it. Um and I simply I simply like tighten him out of the game. Uh they're really also they're just playing not a great deck, which helps me. Uh the really sick game is game three. Which is it's a grind fest. It's it's a grind fest. Uh, we got we got uh, my opponent has crucible in play. They have uh, something like at one point they play a ballista on they play a ballista x equals seven. So they have access to fourteen mana. They have a ton of, of mana. I'm just no not going after the lands anymore since they show me crucible, and I have I have access to a prime time. Uh, that then a, a ballista for seven kills uh, kills the titan, so they're left with a ballista on one. I am forced to like explosives on explosives on zero to deal with the ballista, uh, which means that now I cannot deal with the crucible. Um, then you know my opponent plays an endbringer, and I top deck the path. I path the endbringer. I get I trade my bail my thractus. By the way, thractus was insanely. Better than Bailoth all weekend. That's another note that I was going to say. All weekend, uh, I I am convinced that in the current meta, uh, Thraktas is better than Bailoth. I am 100% convinced. Um, my Bailoth trades with their Smasher. Uh, it's a grind fest. It's a grind fest. At this point, I have used all of my packs to the point where I am forced into transmuting for the double strike land so I can uh, for Sun Home. Just so I can, uh, no, no, uh, Bailo, uh, sorry, um, Thraktas doesn't doesn't uh, die here. Uh, actually, Thraktas uh, goes to trade with the Smasher, but because I transmitted for the double strike land, I get to, I get to basically turn it into a champ block, 
Uh, the good thing here is my opponent is playing a deck that plays like 25 lands or something stupid. So they are not bringing Ghost Quarter back because the expedition map for um, the Secret Wreckage, the one that draws a card when you're when you're Hellbent. So they go get uh, Secret Wreckage and they cannot play lands from the yard because they are actually top decking lands. And here is when probably like the sweetest, one of the sweetest plays that I made in the tournament uh, and it ended up, it ended up working beautifully. Um, my, the board state is, my opponent has a Crucible, they have the Wreckage going, and they have infinite mana at this point. I don't even know how much mana they have. Uh, they have an insane amount. I have Tusk, I have uh, a, maybe two amulets at this point, I have Coalition Relic. And I have a stronghold. Uh, I'm gonna be playing a league, uh, Jonas, so don't worry about it. Um, so I have stronghold. Um, then we, I go for lethal. My opponent is at six. I can set up lethal over two turns with the tusk, but my opponent has a single card in hand, and I choose to go for it. So I haste the. Um, I give plus two plus zero to the to the task and attack for lethal. My opponent shows me the spatial contortion, so I get a three three token. My hand is four lands and engineered explosives. I look at the board state and I see and I have crucible, a beast token, and and coalition relic, and then we all just have a shit ton of lands. I tank for a second and I'm like, I could blow up the crucible, which would stop their their uh, ghost quarter recursion. If I do that, though, that means that my opponent will be playing lands for hand, which is something they are already incentivized to do because they want to be drawing cards with the wreckage. So, I think and I say the best possible thing that can happen to me right now and how I win this game, again, I'm out of pact, so I cannot transmute for a, for a Titan. Um, if I do this, what I need to do here, and the best possible thing that can happen, is my opponent draws a Thought Knot. They have, they have seen zero Thought Knots so far, and they are drawing two cards a turn, so the likeliness of them drawing a Thought Knot is, is pretty real. I, they are forced into playing the Thought Knot out because uh, they want to wreckage. So, basically, the best thing that can, that can happen here, and how I win this game, is I preemptively, in the blind, play these explosives on four. So I go ahead, I play Explosives on 4, my opponent uh, draws a card end of turn from the wreckage, they draw a card, and I look at their face, and they play a Thought Knot. And I'm like, play well, get rewarded, huh? I show, I show my, my hand with no... With, with nothing but lands. Sia Reco, thank you very, very much for that subscription. Welcome to the Primetime Stronghold. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the support, and yeah, enjoy your emotes. Uh, by the way, we're going to have new emotes soon. I'm pretty excited about that. We're going to have a no bad matchups emote, and I'm thinking that we're going to have a, a mate emote. So I think I'm going to take a picture of the mate somewhere, and then we're going to try to turn it into emote. That's going to be fun. Um, so, um, Explosives on 4. My opponent plays the Thought Knot. They play a land from hand, again, because they want to draw cards. They draw, I guess they draw another blank. End of turn, I crack explosives, I draw a card, and then I I draw for turn. And who was waiting for me there? Who was waiting for me there? Yep. Whoop, whoop, no, no. He, he was waiting for me there. Oh, oh, dude. You guys have no idea. You guys have no idea how I look at the top of my deck and I see him running like that and I'm like He's coming to give me a hug He's coming to give me a hug. Oh my god, and I I slam it so quickly I slam it so quickly. You have no idea um, My opponent immediately extends the hand and that's it. That's it. That's for this 10 and 5 um, it was it was a sweet tournament. It was, I had an insane amount of fun. I was actually very very impressed at how even after uh, fifteen rounds over two days, I I was feeling 
uh, I was feeling that um, uh, that yeah, I was I was just playing still very very good magic, you know. I think that I was still uh, trying like every play that I made makes sense. The only play that I made that was a mistake that I simply I basically rushed into making was uh, the um, was the um, the Bojuke Bog line, which I'm still like. <laughs> A little bit hitting myself over it, and see, it was it was pretty heartbreaking that I ended up losing the game because of that. But it was it was pretty it was pretty awesome. Like I really enjoyed it. And uh, King Cantona three, thank you very much for the subscription, fourth subscriber of the day. Thank you for the support. Welcome to the prime time stronghold. Prime time it up. Um. I, I really had a great time to the point where I came back home and I was checking for when the next nearby GP is gonna be. Uh, I think that Vegas has not been announced yet, but I want to... If it's modern, the likelihood that I that I am gonna be there just like went up considerably. Um, it really... I, 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 I really want to start doing a little bit more of this. And I... Because I feel like... I can get there, you know, I, I, even if it's not, I mean, hopefully it, it is a top eight, you know, of course we all, we all dream of that, but even if it's not a top eight, I feel like, I feel like I can get like a X and three record and it, it really felt, it was just fun. It was just fun. I, I was playing round after round and I was just having a great time, uh, hanging out with my friends, meeting a lot of new people. Uh, thanks to everybody that came say hi, by the way. And and yes, yeah, Reko, um, uh, were you the one that was playing? Uh, were you the one that was playing the mirror when when we met? Um, cause cause that was that was insane. Yeah, th this happened on the last round on game one at seven and one, and I'm playing against my scales opponent, and I look to my left, and there's an amulet mirror going on, and I'm like, damn, this is great. <laughs> I'm loving this. Um, but, but yeah, I, I actually really, really enjoy it, and it made me very sad that basically SEG never, ever makes their way to the, to the West Coast, because it's one of the things that I can't really, you know, if, if it's like a flight away, I don't think I'm gonna be going. Um, oh, yeah, 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 I remember now, yeah, yeah, that's awesome, cool. Uh, sweet, awesome, thanks for hanging out, and thanks for the subscription, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, yeah. So you were on the on the bridge list. Yeah, I remember now. That's awesome. So yeah, uh, as if if I do end up going to more events, of course, uh, always feel welcome to to come say hi. Of course, I will share. You know, I will share uh, in in on stream when I'm going to events. Uh, and what I was going, what I was I was thinking is, if there's any event that it's modern and is, I want to say close-ish. Uh, one thing that I was thinking that might work is try to like crowdfund it like uh, some other streamers do this so uh, we can do like a you know like uh, you guys see there there's a little you know like a bar that goes fill in and some streamers do it uh, some streamers do it to like you know with donations so you can so I was thinking about trying to do that and maybe I'm gonna be able to attend more more events. So we'll see how that goes anyway, um, but it would be like the only way that I could see myself flying to events because uh, it's it's rough. <laughs> it's rough, uh, but I, I can definitely see myself like all the all the events that are driving distance. I can see myself going to all of them as long as they're modern or, or probably legacy, uh, but, uh, but yeah. Like how I found free parking in LA. That's probably like the most impressive thing that happened all weekend. How I found free parking in LA twice in a row. Um, but yeah, it was. But it, it was an amazing event. Uh, as far as the deck goes, the second yes, uh, Telperi, I was going to I was going to go over that right now. Um, as far as the seventy five goes, fourth forest was consistently great all weekend. I feel like I want to be driving distance would be like a two three hour drive would be fine. Uh, and what I play in Legacy, I it it shifts lately. I, I mean, I I've always been on Maverick, always been a, a Maverick lover. Uh, but um, 
I think that I would try different things out. I I did enjoy. I played Death Shadow a, a little bit, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, BG Depths is something that I enjoy as well. The only problem with that is that I don't own any cards of the deck. But you know, hopefully, I have enough friends. <laughs> Hopefully I have enough friends uh, to, to do that. Yeah, for Cologne is awesome. I also like for Cologne quite a bit. But uh, yeah, so things ab about the list. About the list. Um... Uh, four Forests was uh, was very good. I, I want to be on Four Forests. I don't think I want to change this. Uh, four Forests was very good throughout all weekend. Consistently, I was uh, plenty of times looking at the top of that my deck, trying to see if that was a forest or 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 what leads me to the next card that I was going to talk about, Coalition Relic. This card overperformed throughout the weekend. It gave me green mana when I when I needed it. Give it give it gave me um, the necessary mana to cast things under Blood Moon. It gave me white mana for path. I it gave me red mana in the in the um, in the matchup against Eldrassitron. It was extremely relevant that I had access to so much red mana for Relic because I activated a Stronghold uh, quite a bit. So it was very good there as well. Um, Relic just was insane throughout the weekend. Uh, Trinket Mage, Trinket Mage was I want to say medium plus. It was it had a couple of situations where I was like. Whoa, this Trinket Mage is insane right here. Um, uh, particularly, I remember a Trinket Mage against my burn opponent, a Trinket Mage trading with a Goblin Guide and setting and uh, helping me fetch the amulet to uh, to set up the kill on the following turn. That was just like Trinket Mage at, at his best, basically. Um, those those matches, Trinket Mage felt insane. Overall, it, it, I ended up citing it quite a bit because it's not insane in the Blood Moon matchups. Because it's if they Blood Moon me, of course it's impossible to cast, and you want to you want to minimize the amount of dead draws that you have in the face of Blood Moon. Unless those dead draws are like you know path to exile, which can come down under the Blood Moon, and it can even you can even path your own dudes in order to give you give you extra extra basics, extra access to basics. Um, so Coalition Relic was uh, was insane. I could definitely see playing a third one, potentially a fourth one, like Edgar was was saying in the in the in the Discord. But I think I'm going to be uh, testing the third one 100% because this card just consistently overperforms. Uh, the only problem is that I'm gonna need to actually go ahead and buy the third copy in paper, and it's a commander staple, so it's randomly like six bucks or something. But but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I used Trinket Mage. It was like, for example, against against uh, when I played against uh, the um, Cheerios, it literally won me the game because it allowed me to get the third explosives, no, the second explosives, um, which was paramount in me winning that game. Uh, that's a for T West starts to make sense more with three four X. No, uh, on the contrary, uh, uh, first uh, T West makes even less sense. Because you want to have more untapped lands so you can uh, Coalition Relic on 2, right? Because your only way to Coalition Relic on 2 is if you go turn 1 Amulet off an untapped land, turn 1 Amulet, and then turn 2 you play a Simic Growth. That allows you to Coalition Relic on 2. If you have a tap land, then that, that play is just not available because you are playing a tap land on 1, and that means that you're playing Amulet on 2. You're only making 2 mana on turn 2. So, on the contrary, playing the extra... I think that playing the extra Relic makes you uh, want more untapped lands instead of more tap lands. No, yeah, that's, that's an error. So, one thing to know about SCG... Um, one thing to know about SCG is and and both the CFB too is they will always mess up uh, amulet lists they are going to name scout they're going to instead put Steve uh, Stacy sorry uh, Stacy is gonna be uh, they're gonna put it at Steve as Steve and they're going to uh, for example the one that's my favorite is when they switch Vesuva with Vesuva and doppelganger <laughs> This, this this just cracks me up every time. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> it's not even a modern legal card. <laughs> no, 
not even a modern little car that like CFB loves making that typo. I don't know if it's like when they input the when they input the name of the car, it just like automatically puts that in. I don't know how it works, uh, but it's pretty funny. Um, yeah, I heard some more top thirty-two with Sakama. Yeah, and I, I again, I think. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> That's actually Ariana, you're just so good at giving at giving emote suggestions. Emote suggestions. Uh yes, that's that's awesome. Yes, that's gonna be our meme. That's gonna be our, our meme ver or or channel's version of Kappa. It's gonna be <laughs> It's gonna be a Sakama. No no no. Uh, yeah, the, the the guy that top 32, he he said that Sakama was good for for him all weekend. Uh, which is it's fine. I mean, honestly, I played against. Let, let me go with my matchups real quick. Uh, we played against blue white. Sakama would have been medium to bad there. Oh, Ariana, thank you very much for that subscription. You're damn subscriber number five today. That's awesome. Thank you very much, everyone, for the for all the subscriptions. Welcome to the primetime stronghold. <laughs> <laughs> Best card to play after you've already won the game. <laughs> Woo! Splav 97! Welcome to the Primetime Stronghold. Thank you very much for that Twitch Prime subscription. Thanks, thanks everybody. I really, really appreciate everyone's support. Um, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, glad that you are enjoying the stream, and you know it's it just means a lot. Uh, especially some uh, some viewer came uh, came to to the GPS and they asked me to sign their prime times. That was just, dude. After that, I was blown away. Um, that was just so humbling. I that's that's awesome. You know, just like to see that there's you know that everybody's enjoying the content and that you know the work the work that I'm putting and trying to trying to make, you know, good quality content on, you know, my favorite deck. Um, it's it's just the way it is. It's just, it's so humbling and so, it's it's just great. I really appreciate everybody's support. Uh, we've done, um, yeah, the cyborg guide for subs, I need to finish up. I'm, I'm still missing the combo matchups, so I will probably finish it up today. However, uh, send me either uh, here whisper in Twitch. Send me a message in the Discord with your with your sub uh, subscriber name on Twitch, so I can say Damarin V1. Thank you also for the for the subscription. Welcome to to the prime to the prime time stronghold. Uh, thanks for that Twitch Prime subscription. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, send me like a message on. On the Discord, uh, Twitter, I mean, whatever, whatever you want, just send me a message with your with your uh, name in in Twitch, so I can you know, so I can send you the 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 uh, the cyborg guide. I will probably send it out tonight. So I just want to make sure that you know everybody that has any events this coming weekend, uh, that anybody that might need it, they can have access to it. Um, so I will definitely fi I will fit. I I basically made two. I made one with just the numbers. Siphonist, thank you very much for the subscription. Welcome to the Primetime Stronghold. Thank you very, very, very much. Man, so many subs today. I really appreciate everybody, everybody's support. That's awesome. Um, I made one with just the numbers, uh, which is, you know, just so you can basically bring, you can print it out and you like bring it, bring it, bring it in your pocket and you can use it at an event or something. And uh, then I'm gonna do like I did before the the big one, you know, with like the explanation with every matchup, how things have changed, because uh, some matchups have actually changed the the way that we sideboarded, uh, made made some significant changes. Like for example, now with coalition relics, we can actually side out the full four scouts against Phoenix, which is something that we were not able to do before, because we would simply go down to like basically four pieces of ramp with the four Asusas, which is not enough. And now with relics, we can safely take out all scouts and we can still have, have a reasonable amount of, we can still have a reasonable amount of, uh, of ramp in, in the deck so we don't fall behind. Uh, so a lot of things have actually changed. 
uh, since since I made the last uh, the last cyber guide. So I want to for sure make sure that everybody has has access to an updated an updated way of how all the matchups play out, basically. Um, oh yeah, Bree Bracer. Yeah, we were we were all, uh, we weren't going over that. So um, so yeah, so let's go over that. So we can actually write this on. Uh, let me make a little. So so everybody has access to it. So we basically over the weekend I played against blue white control. Whoa, uh, blue white control, uh, which I beat two uh, zero. Then we played against uh, two one versus uh, Grixis Shadow. Then o two uh, bug reclamation. Uh, two one Cheerios. Two one Jund. Uh, two one Dredge. Uh, two O Jund. O two Scales. Uh, so those were the the one. Uh, cubic fifty three. Yeah, we're we're playing. We're playing. Uh, we're we're finishing up the debrief. Uh, blue red phoenix uh, one two uh, band spirits two o affinity um, o two blue red phoenix uh, two one mono red phoenix and finally two one versus etron yeah so these were the matchups over the weekend. Um, this is this is weird how this works. Um, yeah, this is very weird. <laughs> um, so we're gonna make the the text black so everybody can watch it. Um, can see it. No. Okay, okay, okay. So here it is. These were the matchups over the weekend. Um, now that I'm gonna move this around, it's gonna make sense. All right, here we go. Okay, sweet. Um, so, Sakama would have been okay against Resist Control, Turbo against Shadow, uh, probably okay against Bug Reclamation, unplayable against Cheerios, bad against Jund, uh, unplayable against Dredge, bad against Jund, unplayable against Scales, bad against Phoenix, very good against Spirits, Okay against Affinity, probably okay plus against Affinity. Bad against Phoenix, unplayable against Mono Red Phoenix, uh, pretty good against Etron. So it would have been good in three matchups uh, that I played throughout the weekend. It would have been okay in one of them, and it would have been unplayable in all the other ones. And that's the issue, right? I, and that's why I understand why people insist on playing Sakama in the main. It's it's a cyborg card at best. I don't think it's I don't think it's good enough for for a main deck thing. Um, and also it requires you to like mess your own mana base. It's just, I, I don't think it's good enough. On the cyber guy, we just send you a private message, a discord with a person. Uh, yes, King Gangtona, that would work perfectly. You can send me a whisper here on Twitch, whatever, whatever is best for you. Um, yeah, uh, playing Sakama over forces is just wrong. I'm not saying that playing Sakama is wrong. I'm saying that I wouldn't do it, but playing it over the force of is, is, is straight up wrong. Uh, Bridge is always good against Blood Moon. Yeah, it's okay. I've lost against Blood Moon Prey and Bridge as well. Uh, Alright, so changes I would do to the deck list. Uh, I would want to test the third coalition relic. Again, this card just keeps overperforming and overperforming every single time. So I might want a third one. And then other stuff. Spell Pierce was one of the weakest cards throughout the weekend. Um, Spell Pierce was, was the weakest card, but. Um, what about Firefox? I disagree that the, mutu the the humans matchup is terrible. Um, I think it's it's a it's a fine card, and I don't think again Firefox requires you to mess around with your own mana because otherwise we only have like five uh, red sources by turn three, which is when we want to be Firefox I don't think the matchup is that uh, bad with, now that we're running three explosives, Ballista, and four paths. I uh, even Thraktas is pretty good against humans, while Baloth was not really. And of course, Hornet Queen is a house. So I don't think that the humans matchup is as bad as it used to be. 
Uh, I don't think it's great, but I think it's better than it used to be. And uh, as far as the crossing grip over Hercules recall, uh, the quest, the reason because of that, I explained it uh, while I was doing the debrief. Uh, crossing grip, uh, I, I brought it again because there's so many blood moons out of the Phoenix deck. It's just, it's a necessary evil. And I think it's better than uh, Nature's Claim and Seal of Primordium. Uh, because of the weird deck specifically, mostly because Nature's Claim, like they are probably gonna be playing Chalice on one before they do anything else. <laughs> so you don't want to have Nature's Claim when your opponent is gonna be playing Chalice on one for obvious reasons. And Se Seal of Primordium, they can answer it with a Spyglass, which is weird. Um, and also, you know, Curse and Grip gets basically around everything, so. Uh, it, it prevents them from regenerating, uh, which is extremely relevant against the weird matchup. Um, so there's a lot of reasons to be wanting grip over over uh, Seal of Primordium and the other one. So I think that if you're going to run one of these effect, I think that grip is going to be the best option. Um... Uh, Aaron Kent, uh, yes, uh, why not going back to a second Rex Age? Good question. Because the word pre with the word Prison deck plays Torpor Orb. And Rex Age is not particularly good against Torpor Orb. So that's why we're not playing second Rex Age. Cyclone Rift for the Hercules Rift slot. Uh, yes, but again, uh, the main reason it's like... Um, we're gonna be doing that... We're gonna be doing this against Blood Moon. We have four basic forests. We have no islands. Hence, while we're playing Curse and Grape over something like uh, like Cyclonic Rift, and even against the Wear deck, uh, where it's much easier to have access to Blue Mana because we have a Gemstone, we have Vesuva, and uh, and we can uh, Vesuva their lands, and we have Tolerate West even under the Damping Sphere. Uh, usually, we, we would want to overload it and making it all the way to seven mana when your opponent is looking to Crucible lock you is not particularly easy. Uh -huh. Any more questions we have in chat before we fire off a league? Um, <laughs> uh, K grip and Ostone or Ravager? No, but that would be extremely sexy. <laughs> uh, yes, that's also very good, Siphonist. Yes, you can. It, it cannot. The good, the good thing about. Uh, I just think. Like, Spell Sky doesn't do anything. Uh, how's the matchup against Blue Black Fairies? Um, I think it's good. Uh, if you if the question is how is the matchup against Utah, I would say pretty bad. <laughs> if you're playing specifically against Utah, then I, I would think that the matchup is not going to be particularly good. Um, but I think that against uh, Fairies, the matchup is is it's okay. So I think that this is going to be a good a good place to put the record. Uh, why don't didn't you test another? Because this is a league. Sorry, this is a league that I was uh, that I was testing. That I was basically it's an unfinished league where I'm two one, so I'm gonna finish it up, right? Uh, but it's a league. It's the league that I was testing before the GP. So I'm playing. I'm running my GP list. So that's why uh, I'm I'm not I I'm not one that drops from a. I'm not a person that goes around just dropping a two one leagues. You know what I'm saying? And this seems like a sneep right here. Now, it's a very important turn one question, though. I think this is going to be a turn one scout question. Hi, Titan boy. <laughs> I, <laughs> I guess I've made my reputation, huh? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, okay, so we're going to... Uh, we're going to do... Shaman. Uh, we're going to do turn one scout here. Uh, we don't have a turn two. We don't have a turn two, unfortunately. But, ugh. Yeah, Pendle Haven also always, always means terrible news for us. <laughs> Pendle Haven always means yikes for us. Bounce land. Yikes. Um, hmm. Isn't this hilarious? 
Oh, this is great. My opponent cannot attack. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> That is bad. <laughs> that is real bad. That is real bad. Um, the good thing, though, the good thing, if we find a bounce land, we win. So that's pretty good. Of course, I'm going to activate for a bounce land. Steering's would have... I was going to say Steering's would also be sick, but, you know, might as well just draw the actual bounce land. It's just... Just makes things better, you know? Boop. 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 Bounce this, replay. Bounce, sure. Whatever, T tap mana at random. <laughs> Float mana at random again. Yeah. Strong hold. Is, is my opponent... Yeah, that that's that's good. All right, sweet. Got there. Um, no. <laughs> um. Hmm. Um. Catching up with chat here. Uh, the player is. Uh, I think the Ferris deck is, if you're as good as Utah, you you can probably do a lot of winning. If you are not, then, I mean, you just need to get as good as he is and you'll, you'll be fine. Um, it, it's just completely different than Blue-White. It just plays out, I feel, I feel like the matchups will play out completely differently. Uh, uh -huh. ECF follow prime time. <laughs> Siphonist, I encourage you so. Um, it's <laughs> All right, um, we're gonna be bringing explosives, bring in paths, bring in K grip. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And uh, we're gonna take out Pact, take out Bog. Uh, my opponent is very likely gonna be bringing in a uh, Damping Sphere. Um, I do like trimming a couple of scouts here, because if my opponent goes hard and scales into turn 2 Ballista, then that's basically conceding the game <laughs> right there. <laughs> Again, this is something that they, we can now do pretty safely because uh, because of Coalition Relic. I think that the, the impact this card has had in in our deck is, is incredibly relevant. And one more cut, it's probably going to be one Stirrings. Yeah, I I mean, you dice such a beast though. I'm very tempted, but I'm I'm not gonna do this one. <laughs> uh, this is better, much better. Uh, I can probably do better than this. In before we we get killed by a. Okay, this is so much better than turn one. Uh, then turn one, uh, the other thing, um, scales. Second green for Titan is not an awful draw. I mean, it could have been better, but it's, it could have been much worse too. Uh, sure, there's a dumpy sphere they were. F uh, huh. I don't think I'm going to be K gripping anything here. Um, we almost have enough lands to naturally tighten, so I think I'm just going to save this K-Grip, and I'm basically just going to be... 
sure, that card is fine. Also, it's not irrelevant that it's this is slowing down my opponent. Not, I mean, it's not free for them to play that card. Uh huh. What can we do here? Uh, I'm basically trying to set up a Titan for the following turn. Just make sure that I'm not dying. Um, <laughs> a fairy is actually top tier. His chances is the last time I saw it. His list is the fairies anyways, because it was that control wave. Yes, uh, I think that it only plays like uh, the guy. What's what's the um, what's the the thing that um, sprite spell starter sprite sprite. Okay, so here we pass the turn again. If we need to K grip, we can we can K grip. If we need to, if we don't need to K grip, then it's better because we can set up a Titan for next turn. That's Ravager. This is starting to get dangerous here. Maybe I should have K grip the hardened scales there actually. Here, I think we copy their Blinky. Okay. Copy Blink Moth. Uh, yeah, I don't think we can Titan anymore now. Because we... There's the very real possibility that we might simply die. It's a very real possibility that we might simply... Why didn't my opponent make a free servo? That kind of makes no sense to me. They could have sacked this servo to make another servo and grow the Ravager. That doesn't make much sense to me. No attacks. Well, this is good stuff, then. Um, is there a way that we can set up... Yeah. <laughs> Um, hmm. Is there any way that we can, like, K grip the damp sphere and swing with a titan? No, that doesn't sound good. I'm trying to figure out if there's any way I can set up. Basically, play a prime time while still holding up cross and grip. So I can. I'm only going to be able to do that next turn. Yeah, it's it's getting really awkward. It's getting very, very awkward. One, two, three, four, five, six. Land for turn. Find bounce land bounce. No, because that... No, I'm going to be one mana short still. One mana short, so we wait. Sure. Yeah, this does not sound like... Yeah, my opponent might be new to the deck. Because they could be making a lot of servos right now, and I could be dying very quickly. <sighs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so I'm going to go for no blocks and see what my opponent does here. No effects. Love it. Uh, so now we can actually... Uh, we can K grip plus plus Titan. Solid, love that. Uh, one, two, one, two, three, 
four, five, six. So that's going to give us one, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to give us six mana. Then we can... Play this, that's going to be seven. And I can get bounce land, bounce land, and I can, that can be eight. So I can still, I can be nine, sorry. So I can prime time plus K grip or play prime time plus path. Both of which sounds pretty good. Uh, now that I drew the path though, I can do this much more safely though. So I'm simply going to pay pass one more turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it only needs Cross and Grip if I want to do it on my turn. I can do it on their turn as well. It's really funny that both of my removal spells get around my opponent's Welding Jars, which is hilarious. But it's it's still a possibility that I might want to K grip the damp sphere and then kind of go off with Titan on the following turn, setting up um, setting up. Why is he not doing anything? I I can set up a transmute for explosives. That's what I was gonna say. Uh, at this point, I'm just gonna take the jump here. Am I? Yeah, I don't want to die to a ballista. So let's take the chump here. This is fine. Second damping sphere. Okay, so I'm really happy I didn't... I didn't do what I thought I was going to do. So here I path this in response. My opponent can do whatever they want. I don't think I care about much. Because whatever they put their counters on, I can simply cross and grip. Wow. Super conservative play on my opponent's side. Super conservative. Uh, actually, I don't want. I kind of don't want to yield to that. Very strange how all of this, how this game played out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Unfortunately, that doesn't really do anything here. In fact, it makes my Titan uncastable. So we're gonna do one. Two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, it's gonna be my prime time. And now we're gonna get, yes, we're gonna get um, bounce land plus bounce land. And we're gonna find, uh, we're gonna f bounce gemstone mine, and we're gonna bounce Toleria West. We're gonna replay gemstone. Now we have access to. 2k grip and I suspect that there's gonna be some I suspect there's going to be some amount of no blocks bro oh this is oh this member no blocks <laughs> Take seven. We're going to explosives on zero next turn. Uh, I guess I'm missing a blue mana to explosives on zero. I didn't think of that. Well, they stun one. Uh, this still gets destroyed by EE on zero. Okay, so I suspect my opponent is not going to let me attack. Uh, 
If they have this member, they should definitely dismember this right now. Yep. So there's going to be a dismember here. There's the dismember. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, to be fair, there's... Never mind. Um, there's a possibility that I should have K grip the hardened scales a long time ago. The second dump sphere was pretty brutal. That's, that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to set up a situation where I K grip the damping sphere and then I kind of go off from there. But it didn't quite work out. Six, seven, eight, nine of my opponent has lethal. Um, yeah, I guess I could have K-Grip the Ballista too, but I was trying to get um, get more value because I could EE on zero, but yeah, I guess I guess I could have played around the dismember, but if they do have the dismember, yeah, I know may maybe I misplay this this game. Uh, no, I want to activate. Okay. I might still be able to get there. I need to find the gemstone mine of the top. Uh, I don't think Titan does it. But I need to explosives on zero here. I wonder what they regen if I explosives on zero. Or I can simply top deck the explosives, top deck the explosives, right? Nope. Uh, and I don't want to show them cross on grip because I don't know if you know. Yeah, yeah, maybe I should have. Maybe I should have just like destroyed the Ballista and try to get there with, with Primeval Titan. Yeah, I, I feel like I play that game pretty poorly actually. Uh, on the play this becomes much better. I guess Trinket would have been the nuts there too, right? Trinket Mage would have been excellent on that match. Yeah, I feel, I feel like I should have won that, that match. That was very weird. I was trying to, to go for like the destroy the damp the damping sphere and then they play the second one and I should have changed gears there. Probably destroying the um, probably destroying the the um the hardened scales. Um yeah, so we play it for No, uh, we, we actually don't I think we still play it on zero because he has welding jars. Hmm. Interesting hand. I think I'm going to keep. This is a Titan or an Azusa, whatever we need. And Ballista is pretty good in this matchup. Never didn't have it. The problem now is if they have the Damp Sphere on two. If they do actually have the Damping Sphere on two, then... Then this this game might be really hard to win, because we gotta, we gotta, you know, Bounce Land draw. Bounce Land draws are very bad against Damping Sphere. Uh, that kind of suggests that they might have some Damping Sphere action going on. Uh, huh. I think I was just going to hold that one. So 
So do we want to Ballista for one here? It plays into this member. It plays into this member. Yeah, I feel like I want to... Because even if, if they Damping Sphere me, I can still Ballista on the following turn. Um, but I don't want... Like, I want this Ballista to trade with a Steel Overseer. Basically, I don't want this Ballista to just, like, my opponent uh, get a Dismember and I get no value. There's the Damping Sphere, probably. Oh, put Explosive on 2. Yeah, that was the play. That was the play. Um... Damn it! Yeah, that was the play to play Explosion Two. Yeah, that that was that was bad. Ooh, oh, okay, okay. Um, that resolves. I don't care about that. Uh, well, I'm I'm actually happy that I didn't put Explosion Two now because I can put Explosion on Zero. And Explosion Zero is looking pretty sexy on this board. So let's do that, shall we? Again, I'm not packed in for Azusa because, well, obviously I don't want to die to a Damping Sphere. That's a Steerings, that's a draw for turn. That's a Welding Jar. That might be troublesome down the line. There it is. So we just need more lands like this, basically. Uh, that will probably help. Not opposed to that. Um, now I kind of wish they had used the this member already. Coalition Relic would be insane on this board state right here. Damn, Coalition Relic's so good. Should be playing more. We're gonna get the Mate Train going if you people don't mind. Uh, why not Ballista on one? Because they have a Damping Sphere, so I cannot Ballista on one. Okay, if this Ballista trades here, I'm happy. Yeah, that's great, because that Ballista was going to clock us so fast. That is a prime time. Now we can Ballista on one. Yeah. We're going to be doing this. Um, I can Pact for Sage. Oh, no, there's a Welding Jar. Never mind. Never mind, I cannot Pact for Sage. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, this, the first in infect point is so relevant in this matchup. But I don't think I can, I can just like trade this Ballista for this Welling Jar. Um, I think I need to get more value from it. Because I kind of depend on it a little bit. Uh, so... I'm going to serve here because uh, the Arcbound Walker is not going to get there. Uh, the Inky might, though. The Inky definitely might. Uh, particularly if they draw their Ravager, I'm probably just like straight up dead to the Ink Moth, right? No Ravager, that's good. Oh, is this a ballista on two? Shit. Yikes. Yark. Summoner's Pact. Ugh. How does this change things? Hmm. 
we can pact for sage. We can sage the damping sphere. That will prompt my opponent to use up the welding jar. So that is that is something. I think because I have a bounce land in hand instead of having just like any regular land, I think I'm going to try to go for that play. I'm kind of in desperation mode here. A pact for K grip. <laughs> uh, um, okay, one, two, three, four. So this allows me to pay for pact even through the dumping sphere, even through another dumping sphere. I mean, yeah, they they regenerate it, which is very understandable. And now we're just going to pass. Uh, oddly enough, they cannot really kill this Ballista. So basically, we need them to we need to fade two draw steps. Well, never mind. <laughs> Yes, we're not fading draw steps no more. Frozen Phoenix 7, thank you for the follow. Eesh. Man, I, sh I wish I had navigated last last match last game better. Is an amulet of the worst matchup for the bug dimension? Less yeah, but um I think that Amulet has a pretty solid matchup against the bug recommendation deck. But uh, the way that things ended up work, whoops, uh, ended up working out for for my opponent in that game was was pretty scary. Okay, so my opponent chooses to go for the the slow route, which makes sense. We're gonna pay green, pay green one and two. Okay. The good thing is they can't really put a counter. Uh, Viruj, Viruj, thank you for the follow. Uh, they can't really put a counter here. Uh, in fact, if I were my opponent, I would be attacking with the Arcbound Worker. I I can't block this because it puts it puts two, uh, three, two counters on the Ballista, and I can't beat that. But my opponent passed the turn for no reason. Maybe they are concerned about me not attacking with the Rex Age, which makes sense. Don't have a Ravager, please. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so they're gonna try to go for the Nexus route. Uh, this is pretty much a forced play because once the once the um, the Ballista grows out of control, then I can't contr I can't get back into the game anymore. Um, but we're going to resolve Titan next turn. Classic turn nine Titan. And then we can get a Ghost Quarter. Uh, uh, top Donor, thank you very much for the follow. Appreciate it. So, we'll let this resolve. Oh, this is cool, actually. So, we'll let this resolve. This is fine. I think they're going to target their Ballista. Yeah, and now we... We ping the Ballista now. <laughs> they can't choose the Ink Moth because they need to choose targets before before this happens. So yeah, this is... Uh, my opponent just made a mistake here. They're going to kill my Rex Age probably. I guess they didn't, they didn't really think the sequence through. The target for the Arkham Worker has already been chosen. It was the Ballista. So now this Ink Moth is going to swing for one. And that's it. Um, so we die to we die to Ravager, but we can probably beat everything else my opponent could have. So we're gonna get Ghost Squatter bouncing it doesn't make much sense. So I'm gonna choose to have access to more mana. So we're gonna bounce the. We're gonna get another gemstone mine. I I want access to more colored mana. So this is what we're gonna do. Uh, so no ravager this turn. No ravager this turn. Okay, this I can beat. 
Okay. Okay. All right, sweet. All right, we we survived. Uh huh. What are my options here? I cannot play Prime Time and Haste. Dude, I think this deck is amazing. I think it's very, very good. Uh, you just have to be very good at it, though. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. So we still have... We can play a second Titan. And... Alternatively... I think I want to slam a second Titan, right? I could... I could transmute for explosives. That's my other alternative. I don't really like that as much. Um, I don't really... Yeah, I don't really love that as much. So we're gonna get uh, T-West. I'll probably get T-West Vesuva here, right? We can Vesuva... Yeah. We can Vesuva the Ghost Quarter, probably. And now we can play a second Titan. Uh, we can get more lands that actually tap for mana. And then take it from there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, this is why Damping Sphere is... People sometimes ask me if I'm like very worried about Damping Sphere. I'm like, I mean, it's it's a fine card. It's just, it's somewhat easy to play around. If you, oops, I I should have played the Sun Home. My mistake. Yes, uh, Pike Sandy, I can do that. But if I do that, but if I do that, then I cannot. Um, if I do that, then I cannot... Uh, if, if I fail to find, then I cannot Titan. So I don't think it's worth the risk. What is this? Four mana. Ballista for three, I guess. Not gonna be enough. Not gonna get there. Play Sun Home. Uh, we could uh, transmute for something. It's just much easier to double strike. <laughs> much easier to double strike. We got there. I feel like I I lost the previous game. I feel like I should have won the previous game and we ended up losing. And I feel like my opponent should have won this one and he ended up losing. Weird. Pretty weird. Um, bounce gemstone. Bounce. What? Inky. Uh, this is fine. Or Titan's Trample, so we don't care about this. Uh, huh. They cannot have another dismember, so no need to play around that. White, red. Double strike one of these bad boys. Yeah. All right, sweet. Whoops. Oh, we're actually two and two. I thought we were actually... Uh... Sorry, my bad. All right, we can update the record to... What do we got going on here? I thought we were two and one. That's weird. Uh, I guess we were one and two. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <clears throat> Whoops. Not what I wanted to do. Uh, Ten and five. For, 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 for. 
Should we use should we use the principle of modern? Good luck. Uh, Silas Berlin, no. I'm actually I was actually born and raised in Argentina. I am a US citizen now, but uh, it only happened when I was 27. I became a citizen at 27. Been living in the US since 2010 though. Yeah. Like de December of 09. Uh, but mostly 2010. Uh, are we keeping this hand? I'm kind of feeling it, really. Yeah. Natty Bog, so strong. And this is going to find an amulet. Ah, I, I said it too late. I should have said it earlier. Um... I kind of want this to be still in the deck. Man, I wish that any of this were, were a blue source. I would take a blue source over any of this. Yeah, I guess I'll take this Sanctuary. Unfortunate. <laughs> yep. The, the classic, classic Natty Bog. <laughs> the classic Natty Bog. Um... Natty bog um, thingy. What am I trying to say here? I'm not even saying words. Uh, so we're probably playing against something, some deck that explosives is good against. So we're gonna get explosives. Uh, we might uh, draw another trinket. So I'm gonna play the blue land, and we're gonna pass the turn. My opponent knows my hand entirely at this point. Command. That's what I wanted to say. Command. That's a sick command. Uh huh. Explosives on two. And I guess I play out the forest. I don't want to show my opponent the last card that I drew. And I need to answer this. Uh, this Bob ASAP. I would really like to answer this Bob and immediately bog myself to uh, to make Goyf smaller though. That's why I didn't I didn't uh, I didn't cr play bog there. Uh, oh, you know, you know what? Um, uh, you're correct, uh, Edgar. I should have gotten an untapped land there. You see, Ed Edgar is the true master here. I'm just, I'm just a disciple. Ugh, this is an awful draw. Uh, Ass trophy. I mean, we're gonna need to crack this. Because I can't beat this Bob if it keeps drawing cards, so I might as well have more mana. Yeah. I think I play this out anyway. I think I play this out anyway, and the reason for that is... Um, I want my opponent to have to need to like use sub their mana. And also, this is blanking Inquisitions. Uh, what do we do here, though? I guess I'm gonna bug myself here. Uh, I'm probably gonna end up with a creature, but that's that's fine. Uh, this gives me something to bounce, though, for value. Uh, this one I know I don't care so much about. Yeah, so now we bounce, play Sanctuary, bounce Bog, pass the turn. So we're up to four mana. So my opponent would need another trophy. Ah, shit. And the, and the worst part is we know they top deck that. <laughs> Bad beats. Bad beats. Uh, I guess we bug them here. Where are my Asusas? Can I please have some Asusas? <laughs> mm. 
Need to stream some of these weeks into the episode. Uh, I'm gonna die, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Damn! Thank you, Edgar. Thank you very much. I appreciate the subscription. Welcome to the primetime stronghold. L. M. Pereira. No, this is actual. This is mate. This is hot. Uh, Terere is like mate, but it is. Uh, but it is hot. Um, we have one more sub. Nine subs. Holy crap! It's probably my record right now. And 94 viewers. This is insane. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I go down to 1. Sick. Uh, one more sub for the for the, the new record. 10. Wow, they're gonna they're not gonna swing it there? Okay. I'll take that. Eh, hey, there we go. <laughs> Pierre Accor, thank you very much for the subscription. Welcome to the Primetime Stronghold. Um, wow, Liatin. Thank you. <laughs> Too slow. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to the Primetime Stronghold. Thank you very much for the support. Really appreciate it. Uh... Reveals your hand, you choose an instant sorcery card, okay. Can we stabilize here? I don't think we can. We're gonna be one short of stabilizing, which is very, very unfortunate. Best we can do is Kalni plus... Uh, plus... Uh, Crossroads. Yeah, we really needed. We really needed any anything basically. Like my opponent had one ass trophy and one. Uh, okay, so they got it. Sweet. Uh, one ass trophy and one freaking uh, field of ruin. Okay, post board things things get nice though. Uh, this is how I've been sideboarding in the matchup. I've been taking out scouts. The reason for that is they died to Liliana last hope. And now that we have Relic, uh, as I was explaining earlier, now we uh, we can more reliably bring uh, take out scouts in, in matchups where scout is terrible because uh, we still have a reasonable amount of um, of ramp spells in the deck. Oh yeah, Pierre Accord, congrats on the... You top the challenge, right? Uh, with Bluetron. Yeah, by the way, if people don't know... If people don't know, Pierre Accord also streams from time to time. He's a... He's a Mono Bluetron master. So, if anybody's interested in Mono Bluetron... He is uh, your... He's your guy. Definitely check out his stream. Very much right now that they are playing trophy or the K2 since it's a huge cost. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, exactly. Um uh, what 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 was the last cut? Oh, I was cutting one trick mage. There we go. Sweet. Uh, I will the, the this is the last card is the one that is hard to cut. I'm not cutting the land because uh, my opponent is gonna be bringing in fulminator mages most likely. And it's not great to <laughs> <laughs> to side out lands in full minero mage matchups. Huh. This hand has a reasonable amount of lands, but it has no Azusas. Azusa is the card we want to see the most. Um, this is probably a keep, though. Um, this path to exile is most likely not gonna do anything. They're gonna take it on my hand on my hand anyway. Agriasas, thank you for the follow. Uh, but yeah, but Kalni just buys so much time uh, that I think I'm going to I'm going to keep this hand. It looks pretty weird, uh, but I think it is a keep. Uh, the bad 
thing that it has this hand has is that it's pretty bad in the face of full minator specifically. However, since we're gonna be playing Sanctuary on two, um, okay, that's not bad. Uh, since we're gonna be playing Sanctuary on two, uh, we can path our own plant. Of course, the attack is the correct play there. Okay, uh, we're definitely pathing this. We don't want to be giving my opponent any triggers. Then we're going to pass the turn. Uh, by the way, welcome to all 100 viewers that we have that we have going on today. I appreciate everybody hanging out. Uh, my name is Francisco. We stream a lot of Amulet on this channel. And if you if you enjoy a modern content, I encourage you to hit that follow button. You know, uh, you can get notified whenever I go live, and I usually post. Uh, I, I usually, you know, I'm go you're gonna see a lot of Amulet content here. If that's something you enjoy, um, how do we sequence here? It's feeling like Path My Own Plant is gonna be is gonna be a play that's gonna be coming soon. Um One, two, three, four, five, six. So we probably want to discard the Sanctuary. That's a Bob. Fuck. One, two, three, four, five. Solid. All right. Don't have a thought, sees. One, two, three, four, five, six. Don't have a thought, sees. <laughs> Got him. Got him. Got him. And also my opponent now knows what's coming up. Make things even funnier. Sure. Um, of course, still the best draw is prime time here. We take two. Gonna swing at Liliana, of course. Uh, damn it. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is gonna be awkward too. I'm sorry, guys, but this is gonna be my last match. So I have I actually do have a problem, which is I do get some migraines uh, that are very very strong. And usually the way that I know that I'm gonna get a migraine is because I start like watching some. I start seeing some like stains on my, on this, in this case, on the screen. Um, and I'm starting to see them right now. So I'm going to probably, I'm going to probably have a very strong migraine in like 30 minutes or so. So that means that unfortunately I will need to, to stop the stream. Uh, but I want to, yeah, you know the stops. Yeah, um, so I'm 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 extremely I'm I'm extremely sorry again. I I really appreciate everybody hanging out and you know it was it was an awesome stream. I really I really enjoyed you know sharing my my first GP experience. Uh, but I think unfortunately I'm gonna cut it short. Uh, I think that by tomorrow I'm gonna be fine. I 
usually I get I get better soon ish. As in, you know, by tonight I'm probably gonna be fine. Uh, probably by tomorrow morning actually. But uh, yeah, unfortunately I will I will need to cut it a little bit shorter than I would have liked. So I apologize in advance. Uh, huh. Okay, so we're going. They get my double strike line. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right? Six. Damn, it's 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 really hard to see. It's it's very weird when this happens. It's like really hard to like actually see the. <laughs> Um, so we got a free steerings we can do. Um, we want to hold up the ghost quarter. So we're going to do this. Bounce this again, probably. We're going to Hornet Queen. We're going to haste the Queen. And then we're going to serve. And now I'm going to get uh, probably Ghost Squatter Crossroads. Uh, Ghost Squatter to Laria. Might as well. Okay, so they're just going to see it. Cool. That's good for us. Um, how often do I get them? Uh, lately, it's been pretty often. Uh, pretty non often. At one point, I was getting them like once every week or something like that. Um and but lately it's been it's been a while since I've gotten one. Yeah, I'm just going to sorry, I'm just gonna submit and not really think about it. I want to make sure that I can finish this match before it kicks in. Uh this is a fantastic hand. This is exactly what we want to see, by the way. Uh a bunch of lands and Asusa. Asusa is the the more I play the matchup, the more I realize that Asusa is actually our best card. Um hmm. Uh, here I think I'm gonna get the gemstone mine. So it, it you're gonna real, you're gonna ask why did I do this? Because it's kind of weird to get this instead of a bounce land or something. But what I'm trying to do here is exactly to have access to pass to exile if I need to, while at the same time, sick. Um, at the same time, uh, so now we can simply but you give ourselves. Um, I was gonna say we want to have access to uh path and at the same time make sure that we can Asusa next turn. Oh, uh, they found the Thoughtseize, shit. If they are smart, they're gonna take the Asusa. If they are not smart, they're gonna take the Titan. Unless they have Surgical, in which case they probably are gonna take the Titan. Um, yeah, they are smart and then take the Asusa. Unfortunate for me. Can we play around Fulminator? That's three... One, no, we cannot play around Fluminator, so we just do this. So we're playing around Fulminator beautifully here. Also, my opponent cannot cast a Fulminator, I just realized that. Uh, because my opponent cannot cast a Fulminator with their mana base, I don't want to fix their mana for them with a path, so we're going to take two here. Shit. Um, yeah, I think I'll let this resolve. I don't want to make the, the choice easy for them. That's an extremely suspect Thoughtseize too, because... It's strictly better for them to Thoughtseize before combat, right? I guess I could, they can make sure that they, they get their 2 damage in there. So I guess it's not strictly better. Never mind. Um, okay, we're just gonna be we're just gonna continue hitting normal land drops, playing around full minator this way. Taking three. Again, if I if I can help it, I don't want to. Oh, okay, there's the black source. There's the fulminator. Oh, Liliana. Discarding Simic Road here. Hmm. I think I'm still kind of putting them on fulminator though. That's sexy. 
Um, all right, I don't think I can play around Fulminator anymore. Because I cannot play around both Fulminator and Liliana. In fact, I should have probably... Um, like this. Alright. So we're just going to hope that my opponent doesn't have the Fulminator. And yes, I th yeah, I think they do have the Fulminator. I don't. I can take like this much damage, though. This is just too much damage. Um, weird question. Damn, I, I can't even read chat at this point. Uh, weird question, maybe. But if you don't play Rurik Thar, how are you going to win versus combo? Um, with interaction. Uh, I mean, it depends on which combo deck you're talking about, right? Um, if you consider... I mean, I, I played against Cheerios at the GP, so there's a Fulminator, probably. I played against Cheerios at the GP, and I beat them with triple. I beat them thanks to triple. Um, triple, what's his name? Uh, triple explosives. Ooh, no Liliana plus. Uh, I think we play Amulet here. We Liliana plus uh, discard path, and by playing Amulet there, it makes it so I, if I draw a bounce land, I can actually. I can actually tighten them. They do have a good card on top though. In hand, I mean. I think we go get Thrag Daddy here. Yep. Make them do something. Because we're not getting to Titan, right? And we, even through a Fulminator, we have enough to pay for Pact. They did not plus and did not attack either, though. So I, I am putting them, like, pretty strongly on Assassin's Trophy. And they Liliana minus Sweet, so now we don't need to play around the ult anymore. Uh, yeah, so far it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be bad when, basically, when the when the stains that I see uh, disappear, that's when the migraine actually kicks in. That's when the pain actually kicks in. But so far it's fine. My opponent is playing very weirdly over there. They're gonna field my Bajuka Bog probably here. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> uh, thank you, Ariana. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm not gonna be able to cast this Trinket Mage, so I'm gonna discard the Mage itself. Nice. My opponent didn't 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 want to run the risk and we were rewarded. The problem is this Lily is dangerously close to ultimating. What is this? Uh huh. So at this point, I'm putting my opponent basically 100% on Assassin's Trophy over there. I'm basically putting them like 100% on Assassin's Trophy. Oh, there it is. Have one more basic, bro. One more basic. Um... No, I don't think there's a word. I'm, I'm putting my opponent very strongly on Assassin's Trophy. Ah, they got me, finally. Um, finally, they got me out of Lance. Why wouldn't they take my basic? I have no idea. 
Uh, shit. <sighs> they got there. Stupid Liliano. What? Uh, we're gonna put this on human, actually. So we can... Ca I mean, I, I guess that we don't have any more trinkets, but still. Alright. Lily ult, or are you gonna get greedy? Yeah, my opponents. <laughs> uh. They don't mess around. Uh, if they give me this, I'm gonna keep this pile. Uh, we're gonna sacrifice uh, so basically if I if I sack this pile I can play around fulminator if I sack this pile I basically I basically die to a fulminator so that's the choice that my opponent's given so do we want to play around fulminator or not I think we do so we're gonna sack that pile keep the three basics whoops no 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 F6 takes another victim. Well, I guess that's better. Can this ballista go all the way? Ugh, the ballista cannot go all the way. Did my opponent just draw all four assassin's trophies? No, they just drew three. That's so many Assassin's Trophies. F6. Come on, Moto. Ugh. Ugh. Well, that's pretty good, actually. So we're going to get Kalni because this means that we have protection in case we draw Chameleon Colossus. So that was that was not bad at all, actually. All right, Colossus, one time. Ah, oh, punished. We're definitely playing this on two because I don't want to to die to a top deck Goif or or um, Bob. Man, this this game has been a grind. <laughs> This game has been a real grind. Okay. Opponent getting greedy or not? What's the verdict? Did they did they find another Liliana? If they find third Liliana, that would be Pretty absurd, actually. So it's just going to be two amulets gone. I have one amulet left. Uh, we're going to sacrifice this pile. This was an Hasamulet and the most amount of lands. There's, of course, there's the two drop. But there's that too. Uh, here, the, the bounce trigger doesn't matter because I'm not going to hold that in hand. Please, let's find Chameleon Colossus. Please, they find Pactor Chameleon Colossus. That's what I want to see. Factor Colossus, Factor Colossus, damn it. Thoughtseize, that's good for them to have over there. I can't believe that is if we top deck a prime time, we win and we beat double. Ah, this is brutal. This is brutal here. Yeah. 
That's brutal. Ah, daggers. Daggers. Ah, oh, the daggers. I'm not gonna hold the bounce land. We're still one land away. Maelstrom Pulse, that's pretty solid, and even bigger reason for me. Well, hope, yeah, that's that's good for me, actually. Pulsing the amulet instead of my Titan, it's insane for me. Can we get there? Can we get there? Believe in the heart of the cards. Believe in the heart of the cards. They drew an at fourth trophy? Surgical Extraction, Primeval Titan. Oh, okay, we still have outs. Uh, we still have outs. Um... We still have outs, including my opponent dying to their own Bob. Um, Summoner's Pact is an out. Summoner's Pact probably wins us the game. Um, nope, they found the Quackmire. Um, Summoner's Pact for Colossus would be hot. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, that was probably a mistake. Um, uh, Liliana. Yeah, that was definitely a mistake. 100% a mistake. We are on a two-turn clock here, though. So at this point, I think we are completely dead. One, two, three. One, two, three. So we only have six mana. We have no Titans. That gives us one more turn. Draw into Hornet Queen or into Bob killing my opponent. Those are my outs. Those are my outs. Those are my outs. Okay. 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 Can we get there? Can we get there? No! Ah, shit! Ah, damn it! Ah! Ah, we were so close! Ah, we were so freaking close! So freaking close! Yeah, he could Edict, but if he Edicts, that means that I... I guess Liliana still, go, still goes down to 3, so yeah, I guess I guess Edict is fine. We had already used the Ballista, yeah, so we didn't really have many outs there. Alright. GG's opponent, GG's. Wow, my opponent just... I love that every single card that they drew was extremely relevant. Like, they, they needed all three Assassin's Trophy, they, they, they needed both Liliana Edicts, they needed the Fulminator, <laughs> they needed the Brutality, because that would have given me one more turn, we, we, would, we would have gotten there in any way, but it's still... They needed the push to kill their own Bob. Man, that that's, that's rough. Uh, anyway, that was an exciting match, I like that. Um, so probably I'm going to come back tomorrow if, if the, my migraine allows me to and we will be uh, We will be trying probably a third relic. This card has been very impressive over over the whole weekend at them to GLA, so I Probably want to try to play a third one and see what happens. See how the list feels uh, But thanks everybody for hanging out. Thank you for so many subscriptors today. I really appreciate everybody's support um, it's it, it, it really is awesome and it really allows me to, you know, keep streaming and hopefully creating some DS plus content uh, for all of you to enjoy. Uh, Pionium, yes, you will 100% need to buy some Coalition Relics in paper. I bought two and I think I'm going to buy one more at least. Maybe, maybe one, maybe a fourth one. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, thanks everybody for the support. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Thanks for all the followers. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit that follow button. Uh, for all subscribers, I am going to I'm gonna see how this migraine treats me, and hopefully it's going to allow me to finish the guide tonight, so I can send it to everybody tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow in the morning, probably. 
uh, or you know or tonight if I'm able to to finish it up. But uh, but uh, in any case, thanks everybody for the support. If you want to check out previous streams, you can do so in you my YouTube channel, which is right there. If you want to join the Discord, you can do it with that link. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by subscribing on that link over there. You also get this awesome primetime emote. Um, and you will get access to my cyborg guide as soon as I get it. You just need to send me a PM either on the Discord or here on Twitch, whatever's, whatever's best for you. Uh, but send me your, your Twitch name in, in the Discord if you want. And then I will make sure that you get the, the, the cyborg guide from, from this past weekend. Um, finally... Um, if you want to help uh, support the stream in a different way, you can also donate to the stream and any donations of $12 or more, um, basically you will get to choose uh, the 75 that I'm going to play in any league of your choosing. It can be Modern, Legacy, whatever you want. Uh, and uh, of course we're going to have like a discussion and everything else afterwards, uh, some feedback on the deck and everything. Uh, hope you enjoyed the stream, and I will see you soon. Um, stay posted. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter if you want to stay posted, actually, if you do the whole social media thing. And uh, stay posted because I'm going to uh, update on when my next stream is going to be. Hope everybody has an amazing rest of your day. And see you soon. Thanks for hanging out. Bye-bye.